everybody, and welcome to Encounter Roleplay. My name is Will, and today we're starting a new campaign, new players, new characters, new dreams. New, new lots of things, actually. New overlays and all this shit. Check it out. Check it out. Um, but we have some players that you might have seen in Audition. You might have seen around the internet from our own Twitch streams. You might have just stalked them home one night. I don't know. Um, of course, my name is Will. I'll be your dungeon master for today. And let's go around and meet the cast of the Beginner's Play D&D. So some of our players here are new to the game. Others have been playing for a while. So we've got a good mix of experience and... I was going to say virginity. Um, D&D. <coughs> D &D virginity, but that sounded a bit weird. So uh, anyway, let's go around the cast and find out who is playing whom. So Anna, how are you doing? Hello, I'm Hello. pretty good. Good, good. Just yeah, just chilling, just chilling. So um, Anna, why don't you tell us um, who you're going to be playing today? I'm going to be playing Liz. She is a half orc barbarian outlander. Ooh. She's a little crazy. Nice, nice. We've got a half orc barbarian. Uh, we have Sophie with us today. How's it going, Sophie? Hey! So hey. I'm Sophie, and I'm playing Raina, who's an elf, and she's a ranger. <laughs> yes! Cool, an elf and ranger, a half orc barbarian. We've got Michael. How's it going, Mike? Hello! Hello! Glad to be here. E excellent, excellent. Glad to have you here, my friend. So, Mike, who are you going to be playing today? I will be playing Pusk Gokrath. He is a dragonborn monk. Ooh, dragonborn monk, excellent. We have uh, Barry with us today. What's up, Barry? Hello. Uh, my, my name's Barry. Hi. Uh, you may have seen me on the internet. Probably not. Uh, and I will be playing uh, Reginald the Wizard. Nice. Reginald the Wizards. And last but not least, we have Haley with us today. How's it going, Haley? Hello. Hello. Hi, playing Tira, the halfling rogue. Excellent. So we've got rogues, wizards, monks, rangers, and barbarians today. So we've got, um, we have a great mix of, uh, of, uh, cast members for, uh, for their characters. But if you are, if you are thinking, hmm, I wish I could have more information about their character sheets. I wish there was some way of maybe, I don't know, going to a free website viewing and downloading their character sheets. Well, now there is. Click that link, exclamation point sheets in chat. You'll be taken to the beginner's play where you can find the character sheets for Pusk, Liz, Reyna, Reginald, and Tira. And you can download them as well. So you can play them if you wanted. Or just, you know, fascinate over them as they, um, <laughs> as they are some wonderful numbers. So um, we're going to go around and... Um, well, we're going to start off, I suppose, um, with uh, some backstory on our little campaign that we're going to be... Uh, be doing here but before we do that i remind you guys of the ways that you can interact with the show whilst we go in today and uh, before i launch myself off into the abyss of playing DD. so um what's up zulus how's it going buddy it's been a while so um the ways to interact with the show if you're new to the channel hit that follow button and join us when we hit 20 followers today you guys are going to get to decide something which happens next in our campaign something that you guys decide upon could be excellent could be horrible for the party you guys um, we'll, uh, we'll get to the side. Previously, we've seen meteors attack the party, krakens appear from out of nowhere, and nicer ones where they get magical items given to them. So, you know, that's, that's always on the table, but they're beginners, so make sure to screw with them. Also, if you haven't <laughs> tweeted yet, go ahead and retweet this tweet here. When you do so, we will have another viewer decision with 20 retweets, and if you are a new subscriber or patron, we'll get new, two new subs patrons. We'll have more viewer decisions, but... But wait, there's more! You can, of course, affect a game giving players nat 1s, nat 20s, wild magic surges, and so much worse by uh, donating. Um, and each month, the top donator of the stream will be invited to participate in an episode of a show. Um, Fred Xenos and Colleen for all the retweets. So, um, yeah, that's all that shit out of the way. But let's, let's dive into what we're actually doing today. Let's dive into the campaign. So, oh, one note about this campaign in general and uh, this, this stream in general, is trying to help beginners at home learn how to play D&D. So if we take things a bit slowly, um, and maybe like a bit too sim simple than you're used to us seeing, then um, apologies for that. Hey, and any devil of six months, thank you my friends. Already six months, time flies, a late happy new year to everyone. Maybe the six months is great or better than last. The first roll should be disturbed by a self magic roll. <laughs> thank you, any <laughs> damn six months. I think you're the first six month reset, do actually. Thank you, dude. Fuck. Almost half a year. Well, exactly half a year, in fact. Anyway, I'll, I'll shut up and talk about um, 
I'll talk about the game. So, also, if you have questions about D&D throughout, feel free to ask us. We'll stop if we're going too quickly and explain what we're doing in general. We'll try and explain our actions and stuff like that. So, we are going to be sent um, on a mission today, on a quest. But we are set in the Sword Coast. I figured saying in the Forgotten Realms and along the Sword Coast would be nice and familiar for lots of people. So, that's where we're going to be uh, starting off, of course. If you don't know too much about the Forgotten Realms, then it's basically a land with um, lots of different races, a kind of hodgepodge mix of uh, races everywhere. There's famous locations such as Neverwinter City and Waterdeep involved. Uh, but today we're going to be starting in a little, a little town. And uh, it's more of an outpost, uh, more than anything, really. Um, and uh, these guys have uh, decided to sign up to a, uh, a similar job. And we're gonna go and meet them here in a minute. But a man who has been um, given you this uh, quest or mission or job, whichever word you prefer, uh, he doesn't discriminate, is a man named Gundrim. Uh, he is a dwarf. We have previously seen him in Last Mine of Fandelva. He's got a big orange beard and he's a fun guy. So um, we're gonna be starting in Shroud Breach Town. Um, so I'll put that in the chat for you guys in case you're looking for. The spelling of names throughout. Uh, also, thank you to Hararu for following. Welcome to the adventure, my friend. You're a gentleman and a scholar. So, um, you guys have each signed up for whatever reason you decided. You know, it could be gold, it could be the lure of adventure, it could be simply that you need something to do in your spare time. So, each of you can have a little think about why you've decided to sign up to a quest, which seems pretty simple. It's, um, it's really just um, going to pick up some supplies from a ship. Uh, and taking them back to Gundrum. Sounds like nothing could actually possibly go wrong, <laughs> dare I say. Um, so let's go around and let's just hear some uh, some motivations for your characters signing up. And also, what do your characters look like? Let's get some, some visual descriptions of characters. Hey, what's up, Finn? So um, let's, start with, um, <laughs> let's start with Liz. So Ooh, Liz, hi. Hi. Um, hi. What's your um, motivation for uh, for signing up to a you know a pretty basic sounding quest? So basically, um, there was somebody in my clan that betrayed me and killed basically everybody but me. I was able to escape for some weird reason, and so I just kind of have nothing to do, and I'm a little not right in the head so okay i'm just kind of like all right let's go on some adventure because okay cool it'll help all right cool and bring the maffin tv <laughs> damn it's been six months since you got this button i know dude salute you sir <laughs> a gentleman a scholar let's raise a drink to finn in fact the astro webs are following as well you're a gentleman and a scholar yolus overlay is filthy i approve <laughs> <laughs> you can thank flip for it um so yes um Okay, that's that's pretty cool. Um, so just signing up for uh, the sake of uh, finding some adventure. Also, worth noting that you guys don't really know each other very well. That you could decide that you might have some backstory with, with each other. You might have been on an adventure before, um, or just seen each other around. Um, so Sophie, uh, Reina, tell us about Reina. Um, well, I just imagine she was like kind of a small town girl from a village. Mm -hmm. Oh, town village, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, just Elven Ranger trying to protect the village and um, trying to earn some gold along the way. Yeah, cool. Um, She's yeah. just a small yeah, time girl. You literally, yeah, it's <laughs> pretty much. <laughs> Living in the forgotten realms. Cool. Um, Michael, uh, tell yeah. us about Pusk. Such a good name, Pusk. Yeah, I liked it. It was given to me by a good friend of mine. Hmm. Uh, Pusk is, he's a dragonborn. Was it, was it your dad? <laughs> no, it was my dad. <laughs> he has uh, blue scales and bright yellow eyes. And as far as why he decided to join this adventure for some reason, he was drunk at the time. And maybe when we get there, he's like, why am I here? I, I agreed to do this for some reason, but he doesn't really remember because he was drunk when he accepted <laughs> <laughs> nice. Signed up because he's a drunk. As good as good as any. Um, cool. Uh, Reginald, tell us about yourself. Okay. <clears throat> so, Reginald is a human wizard. Uh, he's uh, not quite middle-aged, maybe in his 30s. 
Uh, but he's a bigger guy with a beard and robes and just kind of wizardy look about him. Uh, he's actually the uh, apprentice to a more powerful wizard that he's been studying with for a really long time. But uh, he's been working on a book that he wants to write uh, about magical items and their uh, kind of impact on society. <laughs> and uh, his, his master told him that he can't just read about that. He's got to go out and experience it. And he was also kind of getting sick of him never going anywhere. So he kind of kicked him out and he's out in the world. And he, he a lot of the things he reads about people encountering magical items and involve adventuring groups. So he's just kind of trying to weasel his way into an adventuring group to right. kind of tag along so he can observe and maybe study some magical items. Uh, you know, he's in, he's fascinated with enchanting and then the, the impact that magical items have on. Absolutely. Yeah. Cool, cool. Uh, and finally, uh, Tira. So Tira is a traveling entertainer, and after her troop disbanded, she decided to join an adventuring group just to see the world and get out there and get some money. Nice, nice, cool. So um, we have uh, various uh, reasons for you guys signing up to, uh, you know, going getting some stuff from a ship, bringing it back to this guy. Maybe there'll be more work down the line, you know. That's certainly what the notice board has had you, uh, you know, lead, led you to believe. Uh, but Shroud Breach is a, a fairly small town, like I say, more like a, an outpost for merchants and um, traders uh, on their way up to, uh, to Neverwinter. We're on the very kind of edge of the Sword Coast, uh, the western side, I suppose. Uh, and um, ar around this kind of area, very kind of lush forests and, and green countryside. So pretty idyllic little land, really. Uh, and then the coast itself leads off into the, uh, the Sea of Swords, which is a fairly dangerous area. Um, but um, as you come up to the, uh, the outpost today, there's maybe a collection of five or six buildings um, there are caravan guards and merchants uh, people are signing up to similar jobs like this it's actually pretty competitive to get a job like this uh, and one by one you'll be entering uh, shroud breach and coming up to the uh, the building which is marked as a uh, gundrum's place uh, gundrum rock seekers rock seeking incorporated and um, we're gonna start we're gonna start in Hmm, who should we start with? Let's say that uh, Reginald is the first to arrive at Shroud Bridge on this fine midday in the Forgotten Realms where there's a beautiful sun raining down on Reginald. What, is, what does Reginald look like? Um, he's wearing his apprentice robes that his master gave him and told him he had to wear all the time. And he's uh, got his hood up over his head even though it's nice and sunny and bright out. He's not really used to being out and about or going anywhere. Or taking jobs he doesn't really know how this works and oh he's got a, a raven familiar perched on his shoulder uh the, i think he'd walk up to the door and rap on it with his what he considers wizard staff but we're really it's just a staff just, just a piece of wood yeah, yeah it's just uh, a quarter staff <laughs> yeah so you, you look inside and you see that there's a you know an aging dwarf with a, a beard which was once fiery red now turning to gray uh he's got a pair of spectacles on to read the ledgers that he's uh, he's writing and uh, he looks up oh come in come in uh hello sir i i understand you are giving out employment opportunities of a sort oh i yeah i, I. That we are, that we are. Um, you see, um, oh, well, I've got a little job uh, for anyone that wants to do it. I, I mean, not many people seem to really want to do it around here. So, I mean, if, if you're ready to sign up, you probably need a few more hands. If you've got any friends that might want to sign up. Oh, um, well, m maybe I'll just wait here and hope that some more people show up and I can join them. Hey, maybe just take a seat down there. Maybe happenstance will strike. And maybe, maybe there'll be some others. I, I do have some others that said they might come, so you never know. Uh, and it's at this point that um, Reyna steps in. What, is, what does Reyna look like? Oh, Reyna, she is, um, I imagine her as tall, platinum blonde hair, uh -huh. like, very traditional elven almost um yeah just leather she's a scout so she looks after a village she's always living out in the forest um she doesn't really have much contact with people apart from going back to like give her kills and gold back to her village 
Nice. That's about it for human contact. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Uh, also, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Also, Vader, a fisk for following her, a gentleman and a scholar. Yeah, you um, you step in, you see uh, uh, what can only seem to be a wizard with a staff, and uh, uh, Gundrim the dwarf before you. Oh, come in, come in. Uh, come in, lass. Uh, are you here for the job as well? Yeah, I saw it on my travels. I thought, yeah, I could do with some more money. I mean, it's kind of sparse out there in the woods, and I, I could do with some some gold, really. Aye, that is. Well, uh, I'm uh, I'm loath to hire an elf, but I I guess uh, I guess in this case, I, I mean, elves just aren't as good as dwarves when it comes to lifting things. You see, it's just I'm not racist. It's just a fact. <laughs> I'm pretty good with a bow. That, that, that's my skill. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, well, uh, you might as well get acquainted with your. F oh, they're pouring in now! And uh, it's at this point that Pusk steps in. Yeah, so uh, he kind of stumbles in and he's leaning on his quarter staff, trying to use it to help him walk. And he looks a little dazed and confused, but like he was just basically shoved in the door by someone and doesn't exactly know where he is. And he just takes a second to look around. Says, um, I'm supposed to take a job, I think. Yeah. Oh, yes, that's right. That's right. Uh, uh, these guys are here for it, too. What's your name, sir? Uh, Pusk. Pusk. Hey, that's a weird name. Uh, this, uh, actually, I don't know your names. Uh, he looks at Raina. Elf, what's your name? Raina Moonglade. Raina Moonglade, and that is you, skinny one. Uh, Reginald. Reginald! Posk, that's, that doesn't sound like a name, that sounds like a smell. <laughs> he shrugs. <laughs> well, uh... I mean, this should be enough. Uh, maybe maybe a few more. So, we're going to say that um, Liz and Tira, you guys kind of converge outside the building, so you're not quite having stepped inside yet, but you kind of realise that you're both going in to the, uh, the same establishment. Um... What does uh, Liz look like? So Liz is half orc, obviously, and she's kind of green, has long blue hair. Mm -hmm. And she's kind of wearing this right now. She has a few scars, one like right on her left, um, on her eye, kind of like scar from Lion King. Uh -huh. And, nice. you know, hand axe, great axe. Looking kind of badass, but like <laughs> trying to be nice because she's like, I don't know. Her crazy insides just like kill everybody in here, but then she's just like, no, no, what, what? <laughs> so, That's, like, um, that personality. yeah, yeah. What does uh, what does Tira look like? Short. Short. <laughs> <laughs> uh, she's a uh, halfling, so she is on the shorter ends. Uh, she just has brunette hair, just generic looking. Uh, doesn't want to stand out too much because she doesn't want to draw too much attention to herself. Uh, Leather, gear, you know, all basic. <laughs> nice. So, um, you two kind of see each other and realize that you guys are going into the uh, the same place. You hear Dwarven speaking from within. <laughs> Billy Connolly <laughs> from within. So, are you here for the adventure? I'm assuming I'm... <laughs> <laughs> um, I guess. I hear it's there. kind of a hard quest since not many people want to do it, but I hear a bunch of people in there. I don't know. I mean, I'm pretty sure it's not going to be that hard. I guess let's go inside and find out. <laughs> <laughs> so you, uh... I just kind of like... Yeah, yeah. Like, oh, I guess I'll just go inside. I'll lead the way. <laughs> <laughs> so you, you step inside and, um... You see a dwarf in here, a uh, red beard going to grey. You see uh, an elf with long platinum blonde hair, a dragon, a blue dragonborn, uh, and a man with what you can only seem to be a wizard staff. And uh, Gundrum looks here and says, Oh, oh! hey, uh, two more, perfect. This this is my lucky day. Uh, this is uh, Raina, Pusk, Reginald, I'm Gundrum. Uh, who are you two? I'm Tira, hello. Tira, okay. And I am Liz. Now that's a name I can remember. Liz. <laughs> that's that's a good name that is, Liz. You should you should thank your forefathers for that name. 
Liz the Mighty, they shall call you. Well, well any, anyway, um, a fade of Korak for the cheer as well. that funny? Um, he says, uh, any, anyway, I do have a quest, uh, and all, all that stuff I've seen before about people not wanting to do this. Clearly, clearly that was wrong. Uh, you see, um, I, I need you to go and get some supplies from a ship of mine. You see, there's a very special chest of treasure from uh, my ancestors from across the Sea of Swords, which is arriving here today. And, uh, well, it needs protecting, because, you know, with treasure, there's always bandits and uh, people who are looking to take it. So, I've had one of my most trusted captains take it over here. He's, now, don't laugh. His name is Cla Captain Plankton, but he gets his name... He, get, he gets his name because uh, once he was strapped under a ship for two months and he got barnacles and plankton all over him. He's a very famous captain. So, so I know he does get a few laughs from that, but you know, he, he's, he's a big bad merchant pirate guy. Okay, not to be messed with. He's a dwarf like me. One of the first dwarven pirate merchants of all time. And he's taking my treasure chest here. But, of course, you know, he's got some pretty tight turnarounds. So, if you can go there, take the chest, say I sent you. Uh, I'll tell you what, you can you can take this letter saying that I sent you. And he, um, yeah, hands you a parchment. Uh, and, uh, you know, bring it back to me. And there's a fine reward in, in place for you. Sound good? Excellent, let's do this. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All Request. right. That, that's Request. good. That's a very, very positive response to a quest. I, uh, <laughs> I like it a lot. So, um, you know, you can find Captain Plankton. Just, just call him Captain Plank. He, he gets a little bit upset over his name sometimes. But you can find him on the coast, not two hours from here. But you see, my old legs, they can't really take me there, and my, my old arms. I'm quite what they used to be, and I can't get the help these days, so you guys will have to do. So, uh, I'll mark the location on your map. It's just down by the, uh, down by the beach. You can't miss it. Any questions? I, I suppose you want to know how much your reward is, right? Well, there's 25 gold pieces in store for each of you. Oh, and if you were thinking that you could take my feckin' chest for yourselves and steal the treasure from within, well, you canny. Because... The chest, chest is sealed, and only I have the key. It's good thinking. Very smart. Thank you. <laughs> That's why they call me Gondrum the Very Smart. <clears throat> I'm gonna write that down. <laughs> you get the feeling that they don't call him Gondrum the Very Smart. <laughs> Thank you to Charlie Vaughan and Guyver2020 for following a gentleman and scholars. <laughs> Kill him and take the key. So, um, so what is uh, what are you guys thinking? Is there uh, you know anything uh, you want to ask Gundrim? Anything you want to um, you know pick up in town before you head out on a quest? Uh, you know, supplies. How does maybe? a dwarf breathe strapped to the bottom of a ship for two months? Do Do you ask that to Gundrim? Uh, yeah, I, that, that's exactly what I'm thinking about right now. <laughs> He's a... Uh, oh, well, you know, it's one of those legends. You know, I wasn't there myself, so I can't say. But, um, I mean, I hear oh. it's true. I'll ask this Captain Plankton about Best it. to ask him, yeah. Just don't call him that. No, Captain Plank, probably best. Hey, mm. Captain Plank. <laughs> so, um... I mean, if not, um, you know, Gundrum's gonna sit down at his desk and go back to his his ledgers and his writing, uh, and says, uh, "You know, Scram, not not long to wait for. Captain Plank will be here any minute. Get down to that beach as soon as you can." All right, yeah, off we go. Yeah. Walks out. All right, cool. <laughs> <laughs> Stroll down. Sea turtles, that's right, yes. Um, so, um, he's not a dwarf, he's a barnacle. <laughs> Vader Lord Ajax are following as well, you're a gentleman and a scholar. So, um, you guys uh, head out back into the, um, 
but back out into the uh, that's kind of outpost of Shroud Bridge, and you know you can smell the the salty sea air is, isn't far away. Um, so it looks like heading west will take you down to the beach, and you do have a, a map of the uh, the general environs. Uh, who would be leading the way for uh, scouting out this um, uh, this, this uh, you know beach? I'll do it. Okay. <laughs> So, um, okay, cool. So why don't you, uh, roll me a survival check? All right. <clears throat> I'm very excited. I've never been to a beach before. Yeah. Yeah, you guys might not have ever seen the sea as well. Uh, also, uh, something to note, when you roll, shout out your roll so we can all hear it on stream. Yes, so I have... I got a 15. Ooh. 15's pretty good. So, um, you, you managed to navigate the, uh, the, the kind of passage leading up to the beach pretty, pretty well without getting too lost. You know, there's only so far wrong that you can really go getting down to the beach at this point. Um, but you see, uh, as you kind of crest the hill and you come into the, uh, the, the beach where, uh, it looks like, uh, the kind of kind of bay area where ships could dock and unload their goods onto the beach and come up through here. You see that there is a shipwreck, and um, this would appear to be the ship of Captain Plankton, um, who has uh, potentially last night in a pretty bad storm uh, crashed up on the jagged rocks uh, on the beach and kind of washed up on the beach. So you see the kind of contents of the ship all over the... Uh, the kind of, um, I don't know what the word would be for it, all over the beach, I suppose, uh, and kind of washing up onto the beach. There's, uh, you know, dead uh, dead men, the, the the crew of the ship who have drowned or, you know, died in the on the jagged rocks, um, all kind of turning up on the beach. And there's, you know, seagulls uh, taking the, the prizes, littering the dead, and, uh, you know, some uh, some birds eating, poking out the eyes of people and stuff like that. Uh, the ship itself seems to have kind of just about managed to get towards the beach, so you would get wet trying to get into it. Uh, you don't immediately spot the uh, the treasure chest, however. <laughs> Bless you. Sorry, I thought that was muted. <laughs> <laughs> Potatoes. Proceed, sorry. <laughs> so, um, what do you guys do when you see this? So, so I kind of... Go, go for it. <laughs> Right, so I look at like all the dead bodies, and I'm just like, nice, and I proceed to move them. <laughs> all right, so you, so you go down onto the beach and move some around, <laughs> and loot them. Um, you find uh, pretty slim pickings. It looks like uh, a couple of other, other scavengers got to their bodies pretty quickly as well. Um, and um, you see, there are a couple of scavenging people around, also kind of lit littering the dead around here. Um, the less than reputable looking gentlemen. And uh, you see, uh, gonna pick up some daggers, stuff like that. If you're looking for a kind of uh, common weapon, you might be able to find one. Uh, plenty of uh, you know, rope around the place as well. Uh, a couple of copper pieces. They didn't really carry much gold on them. Um, you'd know that uh, their big payday would be when they arrived into port, so they wouldn't really travel with much money. Also, there's barrels of uh, grog and rum, which are kind of lying around the place. Some of them have semi-opened and burst. I'll take a uh, rum. And how many copper pieces did you say? About three or four. We'll say four. We'll say four. <laughs> <laughs> what about the uh, the rest of you guys? You see this kind of devastation before you. I would just be poking bodies with my staff. Like, well, this doesn't seem to be much of a sea captain. He seems to have crashed his ocean vessel. Yeah. <laughs> You, uh, you see that on the, the ship itself, there is uh, a lot of uh, crewmen who uh, looks like they died on the ship still, and it's kind of just kind of drifted onto the shore. Um, so if you wanted to get onto the ship and explore around there, that was something else that you could do as well, and uh, have a have a look around. Most likely where the captain himself is, you know, um, we'll say that Liz, uh, you've looked at all the bodies, none of, this, none of these uh, fit the description of Captain Plankton. I think that Pusk would have walked up to the water line, and he's uh -huh. probably standing about ankle deep in the water, leaning on his staff in front of him, just looking 
at the vessel. Can I make a perception check to see if I, I notice anything trying to determine maybe like the cause of crash or anything? Absolutely. Like that? Absolutely, yes. If I get to miss adorable rain for Fallen as well, your gentle lady and scholar. We also have hit 20 retweets, guys. I have noticed that. Uh, so we'll do. We'll do a viewer decision here, um, whilst they're looking at the ship and all that's gone wrong here. So, scenario is, they've come to pick up a treasure chest with uh, some contents inside of it, but uh, when they get to the shore, they find that the ship has been shipwrecked and all of the crew look like they're dead. So, what happens next for us, my dears, underneath that line in the chat, we're going to be taking the top two ideas from the, uh, the straw pal, straw pal, straw pole here. <laughs> <laughs> So, my um, straw pal. yeah, my straw pal. What did you uh, roll, Mike? I roll a natural 20. Nice. <laughs> hey, that's, that's a way to start off. So, um, yeah, you, um, you spot that um, on the, the ship itself, which is indeed encrusted with barnacles and uh, most likely a bit of plankton there as well, uh, most of the crew look like they have died. Um, but you see... The captain at the helm, just so you get a good angle on it, the captain at the helm um, looks like he is almost like petrified in place, dead at the helm. Dead, dead? Like, okay. He looks almost kind of like, almost like stuck in stone, like he shouldn't be able to stand at that angle. It's, there's something very strange about it. He kind of is a little, hmm. And he turns and tries to see where everyone else is, like in relation to him, and if there's anyone nearby. Uh, there aren't any crewmen nearby that were um, that were alive. At least it looks like. Um, so, if you do you want to kind of like climb up onto the uh, the ship to get a better view of this little stuff. Well, I was wondering if there's any of our party around me at the moment. All around you. Uh, I don't know. Is anyone standing near to um, near to him at this point? Yeah, I think we're looking to get on the ship as well. I mean, she's a scout. She likes climbing. <laughs> if there's if there's some of uh, our party nearby, then I'll just point with my staff at the captain and uh, just say, well, that's not supposed to happen. Uh, we should probably get a closer look. What do you think? Hmm, yes. Oh, shit, and thank you so much to Samwise Gaho for subscribing to that Twitch Prime. Thank you, buddy. Appreciate that. Salute you, sir. The gentleman, Scarlet, let's raise those drinks in chat for Samwise. Welcome <laughs> to the Gentleman's Club. Sorry, I'm just trying to... There's like a million fucking viewer decisions going on right here. If I miss one, then I do apologize. Uh, I say but, let's uh, climb on board. Yeah, I'm up for that. All right, roll yeah. me some athletics checks to, to get on board here. Isn't the easiest thing to get aboard a ship which doesn't have a, any... Uh, like planks lowered. So that's right, negative one to my athletics. <laughs> All right, the poll is here, guys. If I missed one, then I'm just one man. I apologize. <laughs> There's a hundred people watching. So, uh, and thank you to Kitty Cake, <laughs> Crimson, and RGF Carvalhal for following the gentlemen and scholars. Uh, so. <laughs> Who rolled I well? Fear. Who rolled bad? <laughs> I rolled very bad. Well. <laughs> All right. I got a thirteen. All right. Four. So, Reginald got thirteen. Liz got thirteen. Uh, Tara yeah. got five. And I'm just trying to type everything. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, you guys um, and Rainer rolled a seven. So, you guys are having a pretty difficult time getting on board here. <laughs> Uh, you're already, you're, already <laughs> you're struggling up pieces of rope. You're, you're clambering up everywhere. You, you just managed to get over the side. You probably fall in a few times and uh, embarrass yourselves, um, and uh, <laughs> and splash down into the water. Embarrassingly, have to get back up again. And um, uh, other than uh, other than Reginald and uh, Pusk, you managed to pretty deftly get up here. So you kind of flop aboard. And um, some of you more wet than others, and you see uh, the kind of devastation around the uh, the area. It looks like the captain, uh, who did have, uh, who was a dwarf, uh, now kind of petrified in place, did have a saber in one hand. And um, as you're as you're looking, Pusk, because you said you were particularly interested in this, 
um, you notice that it looks like the captain killed several of his men with uh, his saber. There's still kind of blood in the area and lots of wounds, um, which would uh, suggest that they were not drowned or, you know, suddenly died of, you know, being hit on a rock or something. There's uh, there's swords, slashes, and, uh, and punctures in them. Looks like he went on a bit of a rampage and killed several of them. But now, as you look at him, he's almost... There's something about his skin, which isn't quite normal. It's not stone, but it certainly has a kind of stony... Um, like appearance to it, and he is petrified in place. So it's um, not grayscale. <laughs> <laughs> I'll probably walk up to him and poke him with my, with my quarterstaff. Yeah. Um, it's very scientific. <laughs> <laughs> you, yeah, he feels hard. It, it, his skin feels hard. <laughs> I know. <laughs> <clears throat> we're all we're all children here. His skin. <laughs> well, it depends where you poked him, I guess, really. But um, yeah. Alright. Uh, yeah, just suppose at that point I would just start looking around the deck of the ship for the chest. Okay. Um, roll me a uh, like an investigation check as you're looking around here, and um. Oh yeah, the next one who rolls gets my sub world magic. That's true. All right, so uh, Mike, can you roll us a D ten thousand as well as rolling for that? This uh, D ten thousand world magic surge table, which you can find underneath exclamation point world magic surge. What's up, Kaki? How's it going, buddy? Six thousand fifty nine. Six thousand and fifty nine reads. Target is held personally responsible for some distant atrocity. <laughs> Oh no! <laughs> Sweet. We're gonna we'll find out more about that in a bit. That will come <laughs> into play, I'm sure. So, um, My investigation is 17. 17, a perfect number. Yeah, you uh, you do find the the chest. Uh, it's within the the captain's quarters. You come into uh, the kind of back room where um, there's kind of maps and charts and the captain's logbook uh, and um, also this chest uh, which looks like it is made out of wood but kind of um, like around the edges it looks like there's kind of gold um, and uh, looks like a very kind of important nice chest um, it does have a key slot but it does not look like it's open at the moment it's pretty big as well it looks like it'd probably be quite heavy that's why we brought the half work. <laughs> <laughs> so I take out my great axe and I kind of take a take a whack at it. We were told not to open it. I would like <laughs> to stop you from doing that. Actually, <laughs> <laughs> like if, if, if you go to so traffic, I'll, I'll like block you with my quarter staff, probably. If you're trying to hit. Is chest. that what you're gonna do? Yeah. <laughs> All right. Okay. So so we're gonna say that Liz goes to, you know, smash the axe down and Pusk manages to kind of block it. Chips a bit of his wood off. While they're preoccupied, can I use my these tools to kind of like sneak by and try to pick it open? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, roll, me a, roll me a stealth check. What's up, uh, Shmo Shmo, I think? What's up, dude? I've seen you streaming before. Thanks for following. Can I um, go back out on the deck and inspect the captain to see if I can figure out what exactly happened to him? Yeah, you can roll me a uh, a medicine check. A medicine check, not an arcana check. Uh, it doesn't appear to be magical. No, oh, and I would know that. Indeed, yeah. All right, medicine. Here we go. Boom. Seven. Yeah, uh, on a seven medicine check, <laughs> you may you think maybe some kind of uh, disease, maybe it could be a spell, but you don't sense any magic. But that being said, if it had been a spell, the magic would most likely have. Uh, like, uh, gone, you know, like, been dispersed, this magic would only stay by and it'd be, like, very trace amounts. Um, however, I'll, t I'll give you this, um, Reginald, you do sense magic emanating from that chest. Mm. Now, let's cut back quickly to, to Liz and Pusk. So, um, Liz goes down with her axe to, to chop up the chest, Pusk blocks. Um, you so I kind of just try to push him off with my... <laughs> <laughs> say, that's not the job. 
<laughs> but we're already here, so... I rolled the 24, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, um... So, Tira, you sneak by uh, towards the uh, the chest, and these guys haven't noticed you as you, you slip in and start working with your thieves' tools. As soon as you start trying to kind of pick this lock, uh, roll me a dexterity save, if you'd be so kind. Now, dexterity save is different from a dexterity check, um, so it's just 1d20 plus your dexterity bonus, and this is when you roll a save when something is being done against you. So you, you do a check when you're trying to attempt to do something, and a save when something is happening that you need to save against. Nice. Nice is pretty good. So um, as you uh, as you start working with the lock, you see a little um, dart um, just kind of fire out from the uh, the gap and fud in the wall uh, in the wall behind you. Uh, it just kind of skims over your shoulder, and um, you hear a kind of little clink, and um, you feel another one slotting into space. I get out of, I get away from it, I guess. Then. Yeah, yeah. You save, so, you, so it does go over your shoulder. So you kind of back away from the chest, um, and looking at the dart, it does appear to be a, um, a poisonous one. Can we see this, right? Or yeah, you see that. You probably notice well, that she's. Would they be directly like behind me? Dirty? No, we'll say that they they don't get in the in the line of the darts. Okay. <laughs> so I imagine that here, like flies past the two of us and sticks in the wall. Yeah. Say, it's probably best that we just don't touch it. And just bring it back. Sorry, guys. <laughs> <laughs> And figure the Rem donates five pounds and says a roll on the potion table for the first player to flap their arms like a chicken. <laughs> Haley, you got it. <laughs> Thank you, Rem. <laughs> so, um, we'll say that as you kind of look at the dart, Haley, you do actually see a potion lying on the table of the, uh, the captain's um, quarters. And if you could roll me, now I need to check what the potion table dice is. I think it's a d33. Uh, yes, could you roll me 1d33? So I'll give you the, uh, the command to do that in roll 20. It's like, like so, but without the, um, without the, uh, hyphen I, I the you know. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Alright, a 10. So, let's see what Tira finds in the caps. It looks like... The captain was a oh this would be good for you a fan of the potion of poison. Ooh. Now um, this concoction looks, smells, and tastes like a potion of healing or any other beneficial potion. However, it is actually poison masked by illusion magic. An identify identify spell reveals its true nature. If you drink it, you take three d six poison damage, and you must succeed on a DC thirteen Constitution saving throw or be poisoned, and then you be poisoned. I'll shoot all the text for that. But basically. You realize that this is not any old healing potion. It's actually a potion of uh, poison disguised. Um, Out on the deck, I would be uh, holding the letter up to the petrified captain and saying, we came for the chest and uh, we're going to take it with us and back to, uh, oh, what does my note say? Uh, uh, no, Grimdrum, Gerdrum. <laughs> Gundrum. <laughs> nah, terrible penmanship. A very smart man, dwarf. <laughs> and I just kind of like take the letter and put it in his chest pocket or. <laughs> Could I, you know, step around? Um, who was it that I blocked? Who's from the axe? Liz. Liz? Yeah. Right, I'm going to step around Liz. Can I go up to the dirt? stuck in the wall and try to just take it out of the wall without yeah yeah i mean you poisoned. can there's like a, a tip which is poisoned and then the kind of like uh the, the body of it doesn't look like it's poisoned so you can just pull it out the kind of metal can we now say that i have one poison dart then uh sure it may or may not retain its poison it may have spent its okay. kind of charge but uh it certainly has some left on it yeah okay hmm. So what do you guys want to do? What is Raina doing at this point as well? 
I think she's just being quite cautious. Like, she's never really seen anything. Like, she's never even seen the sea. She's just like, what is this? What is a dark, a dark trap chest? I mean, I think, can she have a look around the chest and see if there's anything else? Because I think she's just going to be really cautious and be like, yeah, I don't want to carry this if it's going to, like, kill me. <laughs> sure, sure. So, um... So what, what about the chest? Do you want to kind of look at the mechanism of the dart? Um, yeah, I just want to see if there's any other traps and see that, you know, if I pick it up, it's not going to, like, kill me. Sure, sure. <laughs> um, so you can run me a quick uh, perception check as you're looking at this thing, see if there's uh, any more uh, traps around on it. No rosiness. If you're wondering who players are playing, exclamation point sheets will take you to their character sheets. Oh my god, I can't even type today. It's really good. <laughs> it's okay. I try and do it in Twitch chat all the time. <laughs> <laughs> I got a thought, so that's really bad. <laughs> yeah, um, you aren't sure. You think maybe, um, uh, maybe there could be. Uh, maybe there isn't. <laughs> you don't see any, but does that mean <laughs> that there aren't any? Yeah, I guess, well, she doesn't know what she's looking for, I guess, so. <laughs> yeah. Do you tell the the party? I think she'll probably just keep it to herself because she's like, yeah, I'm just gonna, there's nothing here. They, they all think that it's all done as well. It's fine. It's yeah. yeah. <laughs> what could go wrong? It'll be fine. So, okay. can I kind of just, is anybody in front of the chest? I think Reyna is uh, currently uh, examining it. Okay. Reyna is Haley. Uh, Reyna is Sophie. I'm Sophie. Okay. So, I kind of like, all right, move aside, and everybody get out of the way, and then I just kind of go behind chest, and I just kind of open it and see what happens. Well, it's locked, but... Oh, you didn't open it? No. No, no, I got no. shot at it. This second it was a trap. I'll attempt like to hit it with my axe again. <laughs> cool. We're only a dexterity saving for it. Oh, man. Well, let's do this. Oh. I got a 23. 23 is pretty good. That 20, you dodge out of the dart, which fires out into the wall. Fuck. It appears to have no visual effect on the chest. Now, if this is indeed a magical chest, as uh, Gundrim said it was, then potentially uh, physical weapons wouldn't have an effect on it. You might need some kind of magical weapon to be able to do physical damage to it. Have any of you tried picking it up? <laughs> not yet. We're not there yet. <laughs> we're still trying to bash it open. <laughs> well, open it. I thought we were supposed to retrieve it. <laughs> we're technically not supposed to touch it except to bring it to him. So. Hmm. After the second attempt to hit the chest, uh, I'll just look and then just go and try to pick up the chest, you know? Mm -hmm. I'm going to step even further away just in case. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, picking, picking up the chest is really heavy. Uh, but it doesn't appear to kind of fire off any uh, any traps as you're doing it. I'll just be like, all right, let's get on with it. And I just kind of walk out of the ship. Okay. I look you're, you're not going to help carry the chest? It's very heavy. <laughs> yeah, you can say I'm like struggling, time for struggling that. with it. And I'm like, I'm I also said that while not helping carry the chest. I'm just <laughs> yeah. going, what, you? He's uh, outside. He's, just, he's already gone. All right, I grab the other side of it, and I'm like, ah. <laughs> nice. Thank you. So, um, yeah, you uh, you pick up the sheet, and you uh, pick up the sheet. You pick up the the chest, <laughs> and you uh, <laughs> out, you look outside, um, outside the captain's quarters. You see what appears to be the city militia, uh, most likely down from Neverwinter. They do patrols. They're kind of like the coast guard kind of guys, and they'll come to any shipwrecks. Um, and there's uh, around five of them. You see, um... They're a little late. Yeah, you, you see them, uh, kind of, like, clearing up looters, and they've kind of arrested several on the, uh, on the beach. I go back to the captain and take the letter out of his chest pocket. <laughs> 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 you actually, as you, you know, as you go into his, uh, chest pocket again to grab that letter out, you do see that there is, um, a, a scrawled, uh, diary entry, which looks like he might have ripped out from his captain's log. Uh, also stuffed in there. I'd like to read it. Cool. So, um, 
<laughs> and puddle pirates. <laughs> yes. Um, you uh, you see that it is from uh, from Captain Plank's um, cap. Uh, what do you call it? Like ship log, captain's log, I suppose. Um, and um, he uh, he writes. Um, there may be reading this, and most likely the curse has got to me. We were attacked whilst on our voyage by company. He reads us all in it. He writes us all in a very dramatic tone. It's almost like an audio file, actually. Um, <laughs> there's lots of dot dot dots and um, <laughs> like <laughs> italics. Um, and he says, uh, we were attacked whilst on our journey. They stole half the treasure. You see, we managed to have a duplicate chest, but they took the real treasure inside. The cursed treasure. They've taken it to Sleek Wharf. Should it get there, then all of those citizens are doomed, as we are doomed. It won't be long now until I turn. I hope only that I can return to Gundrim to tell him and save my crew before it's too late and I can't stop myself. And that's what it reads. That's very interesting. <laughs> you, hear a, you hear a shout from uh, the beach. Are you there? Get down from there, looters! No. No. <laughs> no, sir, not looters. <laughs> We're here on official business. Oh yeah, official looting, is that it? Of course not, no. We'll come down here and let's have a chat, shall we? Of course. Come along, companions. We must chat with these guardsmen. <laughs> yes, please. Just calls us all out. <laughs> I look at Liz, and we're holding the chest, and I just say, how do you think we should get off the ship while carrying the chest? Because it's... Throw it at the guards. <laughs> I mean, we can. Do you whisper that? <laughs> just I, just check not, it on the guards. <laughs> I'm not necessarily trying to, you know, hide that I'm saying that, so I wouldn't say I'm whispering, no. Okay. Oh, no, I meant, um, I would, I would yeah. The guards. <laughs> uh, sure, I'll whisper that, throw it at them. <laughs> Don't like, worry, if it's I mean, <laughs> hit them, it's gonna knock them down. That's true. <laughs> so I kind of look over at, um, Pusk. Pusk. <laughs> We're so bad with names. And I'm just like, yes, yes, let's do it. Okay. And then I'd, like, proceed to kind of my arm and so I can kind of just throw it at them. Is he going along with it? Because you can just throw him too. <laughs> well, yeah, I was going to say, you, you like, <laughs> throw, it, throw it off, and I, I imagine you let go. They don't. So I let go. <laughs> yes. Oh, shit. <laughs> are you guys having one of those arguments of, I thought we were going to go on two, and you, are we going on two or three? <laughs> I think so. Let's do it. One, <laughs> two. And then, right. yeah, I'm I probably go over to the side with the chest after you <laughs> to like throw that in me, I imagine, because you're a half orc. Nice. Yes. Nice. Faded tune off as well. He says five pounds says, Oh, I just got here and look, pretty, pretty graphics. Give all the players inspiration from the gorgeousness surrounding them. Thanks so much, Tunov. So each of you guys have inspiration that you can use on one roll that you'd uh, that you'd of your choosing. So basically that's the same as rolling at advantage, which means that you get to roll two D twenties and take the highest dice. Uh, rather than just rolling the one and having to live with it. So, um, you, uh, yeah, the, um, so the group you are heading down, by my understanding, and you're, you're taking the chest with you, right? Well, what no, happened was... What we're doing. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. It's fine. It depends on how close the guards are, yeah. Yeah. Alright, so, yeah, like, maybe, they're, maybe they're like, uh, like a hundred feet, they're kind of getting towards you guys, so if you want to kind of hide the fact that you have the chest, you could definitely attempt to do that. Probably better <laughs> Yeah, that's much Bye. better than what they were thinking of doing. <laughs> I, did that already happen? I, I was, was gonna take you know, uh, I'm fine with that happening. To us, it all happened. <laughs> all right, so you wanna what? You wanna just? Uh, all right. Yes. Uh, all right. You dump dump the chest in the water somewhere that you can find it easily, and go and uh, 
and head up to the guards. So, one oh. of the, uh, <laughs> the, the the guys who's uh, yeah, like I said, about about five of them wearing uh, leather and um, uh, kind of like weapons, maybe swords, axes, and stuff like that. They don't have them kind of out, um, but they um, they uh, they kind of look at you. Kind of giving you suspicious looks, you know. You're an odd group of people. Let's let's be honest. You're not like you know regular Joe on the beach having a day out. Um, and they see that you're armed as well. And the leader of them says, uh, "So, what's this explanation? Then, Are you taking anything?" No. Oh, we were <laughs> we were commissioned by a local merchant to retrieve his goods from this ship. And I I present to him the letter that uh, Gundrum. Gave to us. Yeah, he, he takes a look at it. Uh, seems legitimate, I suppose. Gundrum is known to us. Do you know what happened here? It's a fucking mess. It seems they were horrible at piloting into the bay and crashed. Guess so. What the fuck's wrong with that one? He kind of looks, points up at the captain. He's clearly like something weird going on with his skin. I agree. <laughs> Yeah, he kind of <laughs> yeah. looks back at the document again. You know, it's, it's that kind of point where you're at passport control and are they going to let you through kind of thing. Uh, and um, he's like, all right, well, uh, if we catch you around here again, then uh, we're going to have to take you in. All right? Of course, we'll just retrieve the goods we came here to get and uh, be on our way. What did you guys do with that chest? Uh-uh. <laughs> <laughs> Chuck it away? What are you talking about? Yeah. What? Wait, wait, what chest? <laughs> the, the chest mentioned in the letter from Gundrum that we came to get. All right, yeah, yeah. Only one chest, though. You're not taking any more, are you? Well, we only found the one. Good, good. Well, I would pat you down, but uh, I'm feeling generous. Just scram, all right? Makes my job easier. If he was feeling generous, maybe he would pat us down. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Roll for a week. <laughs> yeah, they start kind of climbing aboard the ship and um, and kind of checking it out, basically. They're investigating, finding the corpses and uh, seeing what happened there. It's at that point that you see, that you hear screams from the, the ship from up above. Just as you guys are about to kind of turn and leave, we're like, oh, great, we're kind of, you know, we're, we're out of here. The screams coming from the ship. As you see, the deck of the ship begin to envelop those on board and kind of suck them in like huge jaws now this is of course our other half of the viewer decision which is the entire ship is now a mimic um, <laughs> and um, you see the ship just kind of like crunch them in and kind of like it just you just hear the screams the bloodied bits of limbs flying everywhere ah! Ah! as uh, they are enveloped within the uh, the ship I would Turn around look and swiftly walk away. Yeah, I would look with my party and be like, I wonder if that's part of the curse I heard about. <laughs> curse? Oh, yeah, it's fine. This is most likely not the curse chest. 50-50. Wait, the chest is cursed? <laughs> no, cursed? probably not. Let's take it back to Explain. I'll explain along the way. So we're just leaving them. Good. Um, yeah, well... That's fine. <laughs> They're not our problem. Let's just... They're dead Let's give the money. <laughs> they wouldn't even pat us down. <laughs> <laughs> and thank you so much to Sardonicus Malevolus. Uh, it donates £10 and says, I think a roll on the Warwick table for Tira is needed. Thank you. Thank you very much, my friend. Now, uh, the Warwick table is a one... 166 roll. So you do forward slash roll 1d166, uh, like so. And also, thank you for following, uh, Seldon. Or Seldon. 486. What? Absolutely. Wait, are we all rolling that? Nope, just. It's, it's 166. Oh, 166, not 66, not 666. There you go. Yeah, this is just for Tira. Ah, uh, okay, man. <laughs> no worries. That's <laughs> Confused. What happens? Six 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 would be a good table now. I think about it. Yeah. Oh, one six four. 
the Tome of the Stilled Tongue. I'm gonna have to look this up in the DMG. <laughs> in fact, could someone in chat look at page 208 of the DMG for me and find the Tome of the Stilled Tongue to let me know what that is uh, whilst I'm juggling all of these many, many wondrous items here. So, um, and if you could whisper that to me, that'd be perfect. So, you, um, We'll get to that in a minute. We'll get to that in just a minute here. So you see the ship just kind of envelop them and just eat them and then go back into its kind of normal form as a ship. And then a few moments later, it's almost as if that would never happen. It's almost as if they were never there. And so you oh, guys are... We so seem you, to have locked out. <laughs> you guys are kind of walking back to Gundrums at this point, back to Shroud Bridge. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. Um... So you, uh, Fader, Guy, Patson, Mopo, Groat, Prey, Centrix, and Earthy Wing for following, gentlemen and scholars. You, um, you head back to Gundrims, and it's not long until you're back there with the chest. Um, probably takes you a little longer because you're having to carry this big old thing. And you, um, you see Gundrim look up from his spectacles. Oh, that was quick! Great! Why do you look so, uh, why do you look so weird? Like someone, yeah, it's in a ghost or something. It's not like we saw anybody die or anything. That or yeah. much dead bodies. There were dead bodies. What? what the, you gotta explain, please. Somebody, somebody I'm explain a, to me. I just, I just look at him and I say, the ship ate the militia. <laughs> the ship? Wait, wait, wait. I need to hear this from an elf because elves <laughs> can't lie. Apparently, it's their fey ancestry. Reyna, what happened? Well, dead bodies, ship eight people, and we have a cursed chest. Or maybe not cursed. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, no. Okay. Um, might have a, a wee bit of explaining to do. Uh, you see, I bought this chest. Um, well, I won it. Gambling. A few years ago. I kept it in a safe space because apparently it was... Uh, you know, cursed. <laughs> I didn't believe it. Ah, uh, of course. Why would you believe a random, a random curse? Uh, but uh, so I had my friend take it there. But ah, uh, you say that it may or may not. Let me see. And he goes and gets a key from his desk and tries to fit it into the chest. Well, it's magic, but it's not my one. So this isn't your chest, uh, would you mind? No, this is probably the captain's chest. Oh. <laughs> where he kept all his treasures and riches in. <coughs> well, he won't be needing it because I'm afraid your friend Captain Plankton is quite dead. He's dead. Or petrified or cursed. He had this note on him and I hand him the ripped thing from the journal. Oh, okay. Ah, shite. He, he kind of reads it, runs his hands through his, through his beard. Okay, um, so this might be kind of my fault in a little way. Like a, a little, like a wee bit my responsibility. So he says that they took it to Sleek Wharf. Now that is a, a wee way away from here. Whoever took it, he didn't say who took it, it seems like. So whoever took the cursed treasure is taking it to Sleek Wharf. They might not even know about the curse. I mean, if it gets there... Oh, man. If it gets there and this happens to everyone, what if the whole town turns into eating them? Or they all get petrified? This doesn't sound good. I tell you what. I tell you what, I'll give you a, I'll give you a deal. Uh, he kind of, he's kind of thinking on his feet here. Yeah, how about we split this treasure of the captains? If you agree to help me. Split and the cursed treasure? No, not this. No, <laughs> no, this treasure this here, that's fine. Uh, the cursed no, treasure, no, we don't want that. We the want one to get that we that. apparently did take from the ship unknowingly. Do, do we know which one's actually the cursed treasure? Uh, the one that they've got, this one's just normal. I mean, 
They had my signature on it, my symbol of my house. What's the splitting percentages? Like, how much do we get? Uh, I'll give you 50-50. What do you say? I think we um, deserve a little bit more for that, for yeah. going and receiving it. Uh, why don't you roll me a persuasion check? Yes. <laughs> Turn on that charm. I've got the, uh, <laughs> the book now. Thank you, guys. It's pretty cool. Yeah. 17. Uh, 17. He's, uh, okay. 60 40. Final offer. What do you think, guys? Should I push it a little bit further? <laughs> yeah, let's push it. No! It's <laughs> 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 like, no. <laughs> We I've seen to, how these go. No, we need to make a better deal for getting the cursed chest because now the whole thing's gone insane. I mean, we know it's we do have to go a little bit out of our way to go get that one too. Mm. So, uh, okay, sixty-five, and I'll, I'll throw in something to sweeten the deal. This is a magic tome. The tome, a uh, uh, stilled tongue. It's a little bit gruesome. A little bit. Grizzly. But it's worth a lot of money. I got this off a friend. I, I won it in a gambling contest. Do you only gamble for I gamble a lot for, for, <laughs> for curios and strange things. Because you never know. You never know. So... Could, could I make a check to see if I know what this tome is? Maybe sure. Check or something like that? Sure, yeah. Uh, can I use my inspiration on that? Uh, sure, after, sure. After like, I... Yeah, I'll, I'll allow it. I'll allow it. Yeah. So that's 17. 17, the perfect number. Uh, this is a, actually a very valuable item. Uh, now, you might have heard of this in, you know, uh, Whispered Conversations, the Tome of the Stilled Tongue. Apparently, this is this once belonged to a former servant of Vecna. A resplendent offering. Holy shit. And thanks so much to Night Speed. Donates 40 pounds. And he says, Warwick rolls for the rest of the group. <laughs> thanks so much, dude. <laughs> Fuck, we'll get to that in just a, uh, just a minute, my friend. Just a minute. So, um, you, uh, you know that uh, Vecna being a kind of goddess of pretty evil, lichy kind of uh, persuasion. Uh, hey, Red with the six months. Thank you, my friend. Gentleman scholar. Let's raise a drink for Red. Um, so, it does have some abilities. You're not entirely sure what they are. You'd have to, like, attune to them to be able to gain the access to them. And most likely, you'd have to have some kind of knowledge of wizardry. Uh, but uh, he gives it to Tira and says... Uh, Maybe you could sell it or something. I, I say, uh, you're going to want to give that to Reginald, probably. I think that he would definitely, definitely be interested in that. I do love books. <laughs> I'm writing one. Have I mentioned that? You've not. No. Oh. I suppose you can have it, but for what? Well, we still have to figure out what's in this chest. True. You can just have it. It's cool. Let's <laughs> go. I'll just take it. I don't need books. It's okay. Um, he's like um, the, in inside the chest. I'm sure there's lots of gold, and the captain was a wealthy man. I will work on a way to open up the chest. Well, see you guys. Go and help those people in Sleekworth, eh? Because I mean, it's the right thing to do as well. well how are we to get there? Do you have? A, is it? I've got a wagon island. you could take. A wagon? We're not getting the money yet? No, yeah, I, 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 can, I can pay <laughs> you something up front. I mean, a little Is bit. Is that 25 gold? I mean, that 25 I'm... gold, aye, Reina, aye. And he hands you the, the 25. That that I can pay you now. But I mean, I was expecting that I'd have all my treasure here to be able to pay you with, but... I mean, I can't get it until I open this chest, which is going to take me a while. I'm going to have to go and... <sighs> but listen, so not work on this one. <laughs> so so telling us to leave, go do the other part of the quest, and yeah. then come back at that chest and the other money. Maybe if we could help you open the chest, we could. <laughs> I have a great chest. chest. I'm, I'm very like, really like move aside. I mean, Let if me you can open that, that thing, then good luck to you. But I'm just worried about those people that are going to be dying at Sleek Wharf. 
It'll be fine. Money. Yeah, we're here for the money. So. But you want us to bring the cursed chest to you? Are no, you no, I want you to fucking something? kill that chest bun, that treasure. I don't want it. I just want those people safe. And in return, you get the 65% of whatever's in here. We're supposed to do it out of the goodness of our hearts. Oh, That's right. Yeah, no. Can goodness I? Uh, <laughs> so I grab I... this uh, dude's uh, shirt and kind of like intimidate him. And kind of like you're gonna give us seventy thirty, and you're gonna open it right now. Oh. Uh, roll me an intimidation check. Damn it! Does <laughs> <laughs> that just like raise my hand and say, "For the record, I'm not on board with this plan." Sure. <laughs> roll a twelve. So um, uh. he looks he looks back at you and his kind of eyes narrow and says, "If you threaten me again, lass, I will personally have your entrails spread around this entire." village. I've got friends in some very high places. You do not want to push me. I kind of just narrow my eyes and I'm like, I'm not sure if I should believe him or not. Now if I could open this chest right now I would, but as you can fucking tell, it's magic. It's going to require a powerful mage to open it. I just so happen to have one of those friends. So I will go to him to get this open for you but in the meantime if you want a cut then you better go off to sleep wolf face you ain't getting none of it and i'll just ride off into the countryside without you handing no gold over to you so it's really up to you do you want to do something out of the goodness of your hearts and get paid for it or do you no. want to fuck around some more <laughs> Let's just do it. Give us twenty-five yeah. gold already. Yeah, yeah. so we have some money. So how do we get to uh, Sleek Wharf? Sleek Wharf is a week's journey north. If you take my wagon, which I'll also throw into the bargain, then uh, it should take you a little bit less. You can carry more stuff with you. And it's a wee way away. A wee way. A wee weeks way away. Hey. We were gonna add that. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. <laughs> I look around at the group. Do any of you know how to drive a wagon? No. <laughs> I, like, no. Possibly. You know, I, possibly. I mean, uh, Reina has some, like, uh, knowledge of animals and stuff, right? Yeah, but she's just more killing them. More killing animals. <laughs> <laughs> well, that could work too. Um, I don't think killing the horse, pulling the wagon will help us get there. <laughs> don't worry, guys. <laughs> um, I'll do it. We'll give it a go. We'll all work together. It'll be fine. Take turns. All right. Yeah. Teamwork. Yay. Is this like a covered wagon or an open wagon? Uh, this is an open wagon. Okay. Yeah. That's not cursed, right? <laughs> not, as, not as far as I'm aware. <laughs> Will the wagon eat us? <laughs> you I, never know. I, at this point, I'm not making any guarantees, laddie. <laughs> I, I don't see any point to stay around here much longer. We should get on our way. I just want to guarantee this. You're going to be here when we get back. And it's 65. Correct. That's right, 6535 on my honor as a rock seeker. Okay. Hey. You may want to send some more people down to inspect the ship, but tell them to be very careful. It ain't the last people that went onto it. But not the people before that, strangely enough. It was very odd. They didn't need us. Obviously. Either. Maybe we're like to. Like we're chosen ones or something. Maybe you're not tasty. Oh, that's possible. Maybe that's a good theory. I'm going to write that down. <laughs> <laughs> Pull out in your book and, and quote me. I want to be in a sure. book. All right, well, like I say, I'm going to get off, go find my wizard friend, take this chest to him, pop it open, come back here, wait for you guys to arrive, okay? So I guess let's go. Let's... We are away. <laughs> you got again? <laughs> On our way, <laughs> but, um... <laughs> Wagon montage. I suppose we walk out, and I would say, are we going to split that 25? No, it was 25 yeah, each. That's not mine. <laughs> I thought it was just 25 total, right? No, it was 25 each, it was. 
That's oh, what he okay. said. I thought, I thought it was 25 total. I'm sorry. No, no. That's what I thought as well. So. <laughs> well I'm a, I thought he was being now. quite reasonable. You guys were all very. Do I even want to ask anything about this book that she gave me? <laughs> Ah, uh, maybe. Yeah. I mean, okay, so here's the thing about the book. It has a tongue nailed to the front of its black leather. I've, I've seen, seen that before. Uh, <laughs> that's well, all keep <laughs> You're working on having that for your own book. Like, you're trying to get that cover. <laughs> I would probably, uh, as we're walking out, definitely try to convey as much as I know about the book. You know, I would walk up to him and tell him however much information I have about the book. And what was that again? I don't remember. Uh, well, what was it that I know about? The uh, basically, it was made by a follower of Vecna. Most likely contains all sorts of uh, illegal, um, arcane, potentially necromantic knowledge, and that you'd have to attune to it to be able to kind of get the full potential from the book. Welcome, guys. Yeah. Should I, should I grab my dungeon master's guide? <laughs> uh, I can shoot you the info for it after you've attuned to it. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I've read a lot of forbidden books before, though. I'm not afraid of forbidden knowledge. Sure, sure. So, um, as you get in the wagon, you know, Gundrum says, I left a few things in there for you. Um, so, can uh, the rest of the players who... Uh, in fact, we'll have um, we'll have Mike, Sophie, Anna, and Haley roll, because uh, Barry's already got an item. So, um, if you could roll a 1D... Uh, what is it? Oh fuck, I forgot which one is. Is it 3 or 66? 166, wasn't it? Yeah, 166, I think. Do, 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 do. Yeah, 156. Vecna from Critical Role. Vecna from uh, from D D, buddy. But yes. Uh, okay, so let's go with Mike first of all. Mike, what did you roll, my friend? I was muted, sorry. Oh. I rolled a 108. 108. By the way, you guys are probably going to want to have a DMG up for this one. Um, the Wings of Flying. Hell yeah, buddy. <laughs> uh, DMG. I'll give you the page references. Uh, DMG page 214 for that. Pretty damn good. Um, Sophie, what did you roll? Uh, 75. 75. The Dan... <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> this one is ridiculous. Ridiculous. Oh no. Um, <laughs> Den's <laughs> instant fortress. <laughs> it's... DMG page 160. I'm sure folks will look these all up for us. Um, it's basically you can <laughs> fucking create a fortress instantly. That's hilarious. Cool. Um, <laughs> is that uh, what he left in the wagon for? Yeah, him? he left one of those. Uh, Anna, what did you roll? Uh, 129. 129. The Ironstone Leadership, which is page 176 of the DMG. Um, uh, and who else has enrolled? Uh, Haley. Uh, 156. 156. So you have the Iron Flask, which is DMG 178. Now, um, I'm sure all of these will be looked up by the wonderful people of chat who are looking these up for us. Um, and if you have DMGs to hand, then you can have a look. Um, but not, you don't need to write this second, so don't worry. Thank you so much, Night Steve, like very generous donation, my friend. Thank you so much. So, um, Gundrum, just, he just left a couple of things lying around, you know, things that he's won via gambling uh, in the past. A um, couple of instant fortresses, you know, uh, the Book of Vecna around. It's just the usual stuff that you pick up gambling. Um, <laughs> the stuff he's just handing out, I want to see what he has. Yeah, what, he, what he's keeping for himself. Right? Yeah. <laughs> Oh, this guy's stuck, you know? oh my god. <laughs> so, um, you, um, so I guess Raina and, uh, Liz, um, the, uh, the two of you kind of step up to the, uh, the wagon, and there's, uh, there's a horse which is pulling it along, um, and, um, you, uh, is there, what, what kind of horse would you like to have? You can, you can decide on the, the color. You can name the horse as well. Oh, yay! <laughs> I don't know, I just... Something strong, so a shy horse, I guess? Like a shy horse, yeah. Even a shire! <laughs> okay, cool. What do we want to call the horse? Very important. With my notes. <laughs> it's very important. Bill. The horse's name is Bill. 
Bill. Bill the pony. I'll name the other one Tracy. Tracy. Cool. So we've got <laughs> Bill and Tracy. Alright, let me make notes of this. Bill and Tracy, the Shire Horses. Cool. So you begin your week long journey to the uh, uh, the town of Sleek Wolf, which you really don't know too much about. Um, and uh, you. Uh, <laughs> Dan's instant whores, yes. Uh, so you pick up um, your items and head on your way. So some of you are probably riding in a back of the wagon, or some two of you out front uh, with the uh, the horses at the reins. Uh, you're going through some pretty nice countryside, and we're going to do a little bit of a uh, little bit of travel mechanic. Uh, I can't carry the wagon, Mr. Frodo, but I can carry you. <laughs> you, uh, yeah. But we're going to do a little bit of travel mechanic. Now this is something probably new to some of you. I'm not sure if we might have done it. With Barry the other day, but anyway. Um, I'm gonna just the... out for everyone. I am a D and D virgin. No, no oh, worries. Gosh. So we're gonna, <laughs> we're gonna just just dip the toes in the water. We're gonna do a pretty easy one. So basically, you guys are traveling, and the idea of this mechanic is to get you guys um, thinking about some things that could happen along the road, and to make travel less boring, and make it not kind of like a fast travel, so you instantly reach a location. So to give you guys some agency over the story. Um, we ask you to think of a scenario or an encounter which could happen. Now, it could be something such as uh, we run into some merchants along the road and they're looking to sell us some potions, and then that's an opportunity that we can play out in character to, um, to you know, give you some potions. Uh, or it could be that we see a band of goblins and we need to either hide from them, you know, fight them, or uh, run away from them, and um, so you guys get a bit of agency over the, uh, the story. Um, it really could be anything. It could just think of a problem that you might encounter whilst you are on the roads. Maybe it's uh, a river that you need to cross. You need to get to the other side. Maybe you're going to cut down a tree. Um, so you think about what a problem is. You think about how you're going to solve that uh, scenario. And it's it's much easier than it might sound like. So we're going to give you um, a uh, an example here with... We'll let, we'll let Barry go first because I feel like we've, we've had one with... Uh, with Barry before. Um, so, um, yeah, why not goblin merchants who want to sell quality potions, indeed. So, Barry, whilst you guys are traveling the road, what is Reginald up to? What is something which might happen to uh, to Reginald whilst he's going to Sleek Wharf? Well, other than attuning to this book, which I read about in my Dungeon Master's Guide, available on Amazon, get yours today. <laughs> uh, uh, I'm totally going to attune to this, even though uh, I've read all of the description, and <laughs> I, I accept these terms. I accept the terms yeah. of service. You sign yeah. over your soul to Vecna? No, not entirely. Just that uh, it's just kind of funny considering my backstory, my character. Uh, um, no, I've never done one of these travel mechanic things before. I don't know why you okay. thought that was funny. Well, I, well, I, I just had to, a I feeling. To... I need to pick a thing that happens to us? Yeah, just think of something that could happen. Uh, it could be revol revolving around your book, it could just be a little, little scene that you want to play out, or it could be uh, an encounter along the road. Oh my, I don't know. Uh, yeah, I would just be focusing on my book. And uh, according to this, I can use it uh, in spellcastery ways, which is good, because none of you have, your, the rest right. of you have any use for this. But it does say that Vecna, who I believe is the uh, god of evilness and torture things, mm -hmm, is uh, uh, also watching us, or me, more yep. importantly, while I'm carrying and using this book, and can write messages to me in the book nice. uh, that I can read <laughs> cryptic messages. Cool. So we'll say that Reginald. Uh, the first night that you guys are traveling along uh, in your wagon, you, um, you, know, you stop to make camp with you guys and you open up your book and you realize that there's an extra uh, passage in the first um, page of the book. And mm -hmm. uh, you kind of open up the, the tongue-covered <coughs> um, uh, page. And uh, in very ha true Harry Potter style, um, the, uh, <laughs> you open it up and it has, uh, Hello, Reginald. Written of course. there. Oh, how odd. Now, uh, <laughs> because of the nature of my actual spell book, this is really weird. And I've never, I swear, and I've never actually read this entry in the Dun Dungeon Master's Guide. But I had created the backstory for my character that this is actually something that my master 
could do was write messages to me back and forth in my oh, spell cool. book uh, and communicate with me that way uh, and that he could watch over me while I was out journeying in the world uh, writing my book. And apparently now also I have a second spell book that I can use as a spell book and that the god Vecna is writing messages to yeah. me. So I might just find this confusing and think that I'm actually getting a message from my master. Sure, sure. Because so, that's, cause that's funny. Yeah, yeah. So that's, that's super funny that things work out like this. So, um, yeah, it says, uh, Hello, Reginald. And it's written in this kind of like scrawly uh, font. Like very kind of spidery font, but unlike unlike your master's uh, mm -hmm. hand. Or I would notice that it was a different handwriting. Yeah. I would I would just look at the book, and my familiar, who is named Walter, by the way, would also be looking at the book over my shoulder, and we would look at each other like, "This is strange. What is this?" And I would open the book up and say, "Hello." <laughs> I, I, I like that I mimed a book while I have a book in my life. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Hello. So um, a few kind of seconds uh, pass by, and you think, "Ah, oh, it's going to happen," and uh, the uh, the the text begins to appear, almost as if it's being written uh, before your very eyes. And uh, the the text reads, uh, "That treasure chest." could come in handy to me. The cursed one or the one that we left with the dwarf? A couple of seconds passed. Cursed. That makes a lot of sense. It does seem <laughs> now, what does the rest of the party think is going on when I'm talking to a book? Well, yeah, I'm looking very inquisitively at you. Because I'm not hiding it at all, or thinking that this is weird at all. I'm to I'm holding a book open and chatting with it openly. Well, who's in the cart and who's walking? Uh... Well, I'm I think, guessing. I thought we had yeah, at this point, you guys are kind of stopped for uh, for the first night, so you're around a campfire uh, on off the side of the road, I suppose. I would lean in and say, I would probably advise not talking to Vecna. Oh, Vecna, is that... Can I make a history check on the book? Or sure. Or kind of check or something? What uh, would you... Yeah, his history check would be good, actually. <laughs> Let's see how I do on this. Oh, God. Is that a one? Oh, it's a 12. Okay. <laughs> 12. <laughs> so, There's a one in it. So you might have heard something about books like these uh, in general containing recipes for... Uh, all sorts of uh, terrible acts that Vecna's very much into, such as, um, uh, you know, creating liches and zombies and constructs and all sorts of forbidden arts. Mm. But you don't know specifically what this book, is, its history is. Right. I, I'm not one, much of one to believe in. I mean, I know of the gods and I have some interesting theories about what they actually are, but... Uh, I, I know that uh, my school of magic doesn't really intertwine with necromancy very much, so I'm just kind of like, hey, it's fine. I'm a wizard. I can handle this. <laughs> None of you foolish mortals would be able to comprehend the things going on between me and this very interesting book right now. How do, do you she want me? Down for us. Do you want me to put the chest into the book? <laughs> <laughs> the, a couple of seconds uh, go by, uh, and uh, the text reads, "The book in the chest." Oh, that's interesting. I'll think about it. <laughs> <laughs> cool. So, um, do you? Uh, you retire to your studies for the uh, the rest of the night. Uh, and thank you to Shriven Vanilla, Bokilin, and Game Master Ant for following a gentleman and scholars. And I believe that's 30 followers, actually, yes, which means viewer decision number two. So um, these guys... What's up, Steve? Evening, sir. Uh, these guys are traveling to the town of Sleek Wharf, so they're on the road, so... What happens next? Underneath this line in the chat, write your ideas as to something which could happen next in our adventure. Could be a good thing, could be a bad one. You guys decide. Get your ideas in chat and um, 
we'll see what happens. So, um, let's go up to uh, to Haley and Tira. So, um, we'll say uh, the night passes, or in fact, if you want to um, have something happen in the night, then feel free to. Um, so, what happens whilst you guys are uh, are at a campfire, I suppose? Uh. <laughs> it's all good. So uh. some some suggestions could be, you know, you could uh, you could hear some uh, creatures in the woods. You could just want to go hunting and uh, and do something like that. Uh, you could meet some travelers on the road, or you could just play out a little. Uh, if you have any questions for the other party members, um, getting to know them a bit better is also something that you could do. I say let's go hunting. Okay. Uh, are you taking anyone with you, or does anyone want to go with her? I would offer, but uh, anybody want to go hunting? Yeah, Raina would definitely want to go. She's like, I need some normality. <laughs> <laughs> go in the woods. I'm doing the curses. <laughs> okay. I'll go with them. I was like, is it just us? <laughs> we'll just go. I'll go with you. <laughs> All right. I have no desire to hunt things. I'm copying spells into my new book with a tongue on the cover. <laughs> <laughs> just tongue in this book right now. It's... Uh... <laughs> No big deal, guys. Cool. So, um, you guys go into the, um, yeah, you guys go into the, uh, the forest, the woods, I suppose, uh, to, uh, to go hunting. Why don't you both roll me some, uh, survival checks to see how well the hunting goes. Uh, Steve, all these sheets are on the website, my friend, so go check them out. Just getting all these viewer uh, decisions into the straw poll. Shout out these rolls once you get them in. <laughs> well, hunting does not. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Lord. It's not going so, well today. <laughs> uh, Sophie, what did um, Raina roll? So I got a six. <laughs> a six? Good. <laughs> okay, and. Really, there's... three curses have thrown her off, and she's yeah. like, what? <laughs> you got a nine? A nine? Nine? So, um. Yeah, you guys uh, are having a very uh, a, a remarkably uneventful hunting trip, honestly. You've, you've kind of found nothing in the area, you know. Even the one rabbit that you saw at some point managed to get away from you guys, and it really wouldn't have been worth any worth any way to, uh, to feed, you know, five. You'd have to get a lot of rabbits. Um, so, you, uh, you're pretty... Um, you know, distraught with yourselves. You know, you guys kind of thought that you'd be a bit better than this. You kind of thought that you might be some good hunter huntresses. Um, but uh, after a while, it's been several, several hours, you spot uh, a clearing ahead. And as you guys are strolling through the, uh, the underbrush, about to turn back and go home, you see uh, what appears to be a unicorn. Now, this is a very rare sighting. However, uh, unicorns being magical creatures, they do um, like to stay in forest glades, and they're often tended to by druids. And at this point, you actually do see uh, what would appear to be a druid uh, walking uh, next to his unicorn. Uh, kind of um, strokes its uh, like face, I suppose. Like like a horse's nose thingy. I don't know what you call them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know what I mean. Uh, and uh, he's this kind of old guy in some brown robes, uh, kind of old beard, and uh, seems to just be peacefully passing along uh, in the uh, the forests. And then he stops, he turns, and you see where his eyes clearly are blind. He can't actually see anything, but he uh, he calls out and says, "Yola, what do you want?" And he's like kind of turned directly to where you guys are. I kind of like turn towards her, like, whisper, do we see anything? <laughs> I think I'm not there. <laughs> uh, is it just me up there? Or is it just oh, like. It's uh, two of you guys, yeah. yeah. Oh, I guess the three of you went out, right? Yeah, didn't uh, Liz go with us? Or did you see Did they not roll? No. Ah, <laughs> oh, shit. My bad. Oh, well, it doesn't even matter. It doesn't matter. You're <laughs> So yeah, the, the three of you are there, and you're kind of together, we'll say. <laughs> so, and he's, he's turned to look at the two of you, even though he can't clearly see. Yeah, so we can see that he's blind. Like. Oh yeah, he, you know, his eyes are kind of clouded over. So, I don't we'll see just... anything. <laughs> <laughs> we'll probably just call out like, hey, we're just in the area, we're, we're going back to camp now. See ya. <laughs> just... <laughs> but unicorns, unicorns are cool. Hmm. Yeah. 
He says, uh, You hunt in this forest. This glade is protected. But they... Probably why we couldn't find anything. <laughs> Most likely. What is your task? Why are you here? Traveling through. We are on a quest. To stop a curse. curse. Save people. <laughs> Curses are powerful things. One must be careful. Well. Would you happen to have anything to aid us on this quest? Any knowledge of curses? <laughs> a lot of curses. Curses! <laughs> ah, yes. They are one of the worst ailments to fall upon a land. Curses usually have someone who initiated the curse. Curses can be ended if that person finds peace or they die. If we're finding peace and death, that's all we can say. <laughs> that's not very zen of you. <laughs> so murder is the way. Not of you. That is not what I said. <laughs> no. <laughs> peace can be found in many forms. Me and Fedemon here. And he kind of strokes the unicorn. Have found it. Now be gone. Do not hunt in these woods. Yes, sir. <laughs> I kind of whisper at, uh, to Tira, and I'm like, should we kill the unicorn? <laughs> <laughs> Something tells me that won't go very well. <laughs> Fine. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if you um, want to try. <laughs> I think Raina's just gonna be like, probably overhearing this a little bit and being like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna ask her. <laughs> 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 what should we do? Should we kill her or just leave? I think I'm more inclined to do kind of like what Tira suggests, just because I like, I kind of admired when she was, when I was, uh, Kind of hitting, or not hitting my people, but she basically opened the chest and like we both walked in. So kind of some sort of like not a friendship with her, but I'm like okay, in like a, spirits, yes, an understanding. Exactly. Okay. I'm gonna go ahead and say we don't kill it. Yeah, just in <laughs> case. I mean, this is a magical beast. This could go very poorly for us. Well, should we? Of... She got her knowledge. It? Should we what? Ride the unicorn? Can we wow. ride it's gonna the take unicorn? a stroll, it's fine. Ask. <laughs> it hurt to ask. Can we roll ride the unicorn? <laughs> he, uh, he kind of uh, touches the unicorn and says, Fedemon does not like you. <laughs> oh. He says you That's racist. He oh. says you might wish us harm. Oh. God dang it, Liz. <laughs> Shit. Sorry, guys. <laughs> <laughs> shit. <laughs> ah, shit. <laughs> uh, well, we've got some knowledge. Let's go kill a person. <laughs> and this curse. Yes, we'll just uh, go back to camp at this point then, since we can't okay. ride the daring unicorn. Sure. So, how did the hunting go? Uh, Poorly. <laughs> but we found a unicorn. Yeah. <laughs> What? What? <laughs> Very majestic. I've heard. Not like us, though. <laughs> I would love to encounter a unicorn and write about it in my book. Well, maybe you should have gone hunting with us. Oh, I'm adventuring very poorly. <laughs> <laughs> the, the things you miss when your face is stuck in a book. Yes. But you didn't get any food, or? No, we were too distracted by the unicorn. I understand. That makes sense. <laughs> It's it's nothing to do with the lack of skill, I promise. Yeah, with no Absolutely, good <laughs> Absolutely nothing. <laughs> so yeah, you guys go hungry tonight. Um, and uh, yeah, it's it's a pretty sad, uh, somber evening as you uh, you know begin to uh, settle down for the uh, the evening. And um, it's as uh, you guys go down to bed. Who would be on the first watch tonight? 
I'll do it. Okay. So roll me a perception check, if you'd be so kind. Oh, right, oh, right, oh, right. Oh, six. <laughs> uh, a six is not great. Um, no, we're gonna get killed. <laughs> you. The druid and the unicorn come back. <laughs> <laughs> you by <invite> unicorns. <laughs> They're angry. They're back at angry level. But um, you see um, too late, unfortunately for you, um, that there are men in your camp. And there are four of them. They appear to be armed. And they do not look friendly. They look, however, very, very hungry. They look completely kind of starved. And, um, you know, kind of like... Uh, skinny little bone almost and uh he, one of them has kind of got a, a crossbow pointed at you he says give us all your rations and we'll get out of here no funny business check some that we don't have any yeah <laughs> i do i have some rations <laughs> you do yeah. that here <laughs> If uh, anyone took like an explorer's pack or anything like that as part of your starter year, it has rations in it. Yeah, you know? will have some yeah. rations with you. They don't know that. I know. <laughs> I kind of just tell them. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm just kind of like, sorry, buds. Unfortunately for you and for us, we have no food tonight. So if you would kindly, would you kindly step away from my camp? Yeah, yeah, no food. All right. <laughs> Good one. Now hand it over, or things are going to get nasty. Uh, are you sure you want to be saying that to me? Oh, I'm sure. Okay. How far away is me? Uh, we'll say 20 feet. All right. Um, so I take out my great axe, and I rush towards him, and I... All right, well, roll me some initiative. Your friends are pretty much asleep at this point. Oh. <laughs> Maybe a battle cry would help. You guys! <laughs> 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 All right, let me, uh... We'll work on that battle. Bring us over to a... <laughs> battle map. I like battle maps. I love battle maps! So, <laughs> I'm gonna show us on screen here. Just That's just perfect. made this one on the fly here as I saw the viewer decision coming in. So, Excuse one of us is a dragon. Pretty I'm much. I'm a dragon. Oh, Dragonborn. I can be you. I couldn't find a dragonborn token very oh. easily, so if that's you. I I didn't think of that. Racist. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let me give you guys control over tokens here. Um. So. <laughs> Let's put, let's give you guys a little green token. So if you could all roll me initiative, however, uh, we're gonna give a round where only um, Liz and these guys are acting, seeing as you guys are asleep and she hasn't woken you up. Um, some comedy music on here. Even after my for the unicorn scream. For the unicorn scream. <laughs> Even after the for the unicorn scream. That's uh, what's your character's name? Nike? Liz, yes, Liz. trying to find your thingy. If oh. it's on here. I don't even have a character sheet, okay. Um, can you control the orc key girl, this one? Um, yeah. Okay, cool. Alright, if everyone could use their tokens, that's fine. Oh, so, um... I can't control mine. Yeah, just kidding, I can't. Oh, okay. <laughs> Controlled can... by you, what's your name? There we go. So you should be able to use it now, Anna? Yep. Cool. Uh, Reginald should be able to use his. Michael should be mm -hmm. able to use his here in a second. Um, control by this. So many fucking players in this game. Oh my god. <laughs> there we go. I think that's one, two, three. I just need Reina. Okay. I'll come out here in a second. Finding an, finding an elf. A ranger from north. So, uh. Hey. Let's say, let's just say this is Reyna for now. Okay. Cool. Um, that can be controlled by you. Cool. So, um, let's see our initiative order. So, what did you roll, uh, Liz? I got 15. 15, okay, cool. Reginald, what did you roll? 12. 
12. Okay. Uh, Michael, what did you roll? 17. Oscar, score of 17. Nice. Um, uh, Reyna? Uh, what am I rolling? Sorry. Uh, initiative. An initiative. So it's 1d20 plus your dexterity bonus. Okay. What is my dexterity? Okay, plus two. Plus two. <laughs> yeah. I'll get there eventually. I'll just hit my mic. No worries. Uh, Haley, what did uh, you roll? Okay, uh, ten. ten. Cool. I got sixteen. Nice, nice. Ten from Tira, sixteen from these guys. Uh, we'll say you guys wake up as well because uh, bonus rounds, surprise rounds, just murder uh, first level PCs. So these guys are actually going at the end of the turn. So the turn order for this combat is going to be Pusk first, followed by Reyna, followed by Liz, Reginald, Tira, and then these bandits. Thank you for the view decision, folks. Remind you guys, if you haven't followed yet, hit that follow button and join us. We'll have more view decisions when we hit uh, 40 followers and when we get more tweets, 30 retweets on this tweet here. Don't forget, in about an hour's time, we are starting off our new Numenera game. Pretty excited for that. So, let's dive into some combat. We might take this a little bit slowly here. It's the first combat of uh, the game. We're going to try and explain things that are going on. So, it is Pusk's turn first. Pusk, you're going first, which means that you get to take an action, a movement, and a bonus action in your uh, turn. So, um, your action could be something like doing a um, attack roll. It could be doing a spell or something else, really. Something that would take a, a fair amount of time each turn. Uh, each round of combat, rather, uh, counts for six seconds. So, actually, in in real time in the game, things are happening very quickly, whilst this will mo most likely take a little while for us to get through. Don't worry, Steve. Just drew this one up real quick. Yes, it's a little bit, sh uh, a little bit shoddy, but there you go. So, um, Pusk. Uh, Mike, if you wouldn't mind kind of explaining what you're doing um, as, as it's happening, that would be perfect. So, what is uh, Pusk going to do here? So, <coughs> he was asleep do you want me to take an action to have to stand up no we'll say that you hear the kind of battle cry and that's what wakens you up so um you can uh we'll say that you just jump up awake with uh with your with your weapons out afraid of parking seal for the six months thank you my friend gentleman scholar i will move up to here okay that should be within my movement range and i will take a strike with my quarter staff at the Gentlemen to my right. And that's what I'll do first. Alright, oh so God. that's a that's a natural one. A on natural one. <laughs> It was not very good. Um, so, yeah, Steve, Steve, our spell move and attack. So, um, so this casting a spell and making attack are usually a uh, what known as an action. So, um, your main action would be either to do a spell or an attack. At later levels, you might be able to do both. But currently, seeing as these guys are level one, they are only doing one a move and then an action, which could be an attack or a spell. So, um, Pusk rolled a natural one. Now, a a natural one is when you literally just roll a one on the dice. And so, that tends to have some rather bad effects known as like fumbles. And of course, when you roll a natural 20, that's a critical hit. Uh, however, we're feeling pretty nice. The first combat of the game, all that happens is that the guy blocks the, uh, the swing from Pusk and he does not manage to land a hit. So Pusk, would you like to use your bonus action to uh, perform anything? I'm going to use my bonus action to use a, an unarmed strike on the same same target because I can do that as a monk as part of my martial arts ability. Nice. Roll. Excellent stuff. That's better. 23. 23. Now, 23 is a hit uh, to go into the, the real basics of things in case you don't know what uh, you know, attack rolls and stuff like that are. Um, you roll a, a dice, which is the attack roll to hit, and if that is higher than or equal to the guy's armor class, or AC as it's commonly referred to, then that is a hit. And then you roll damage. So, um, Michael, you have hit. Roll us some damage in that unarmed strike there. Seven bludgeoning damage. Seven bludgeoning damage. Um, cool. So you hit the guy for seven, and um, describe to me a, a near mortal blow. Alright. I go initially for an overhead swing with my quarter step, which he blocks, and I take the opening that he left very stupidly of his face region and <laughs> and 
his face in the nose. <laughs> nice. Nice. He kind of like screams out, Ah, my nose! Oh, bastard! And he's going to try and uh, hit you back on uh, on his turn, no doubt. Uh, so that is the end of Pusk's turn, which means it goes to the next person in the initiative order. Uh, Pusk rolled a 17 on his initiative, Rainer rolled a 16, therefore it is Rainer's turn. So feel free to ask as many questions as you need to. Combat is confusing. Yeah, because this is like my first time ever, so this is fun. <laughs> Alright, so we'll, we'll walk you through it. So yeah, um, so she's an archer, she, she was better at distance, I assume. So Absolutely. I, I'm assuming like people like I can shoot past my party. Yes, members. you. Yeah, you can. You can shoot through through friends. We'll say dodges out the uh, Liz dodges out the way, or you kind of shoot it just over the, her shoulder. You're, a, you're an excellent archer. Who would you like to shoot at? Uh, uh, just the guy that's like straight ahead of me. Yeah. Okay, cool. So aiming at this guy. So you can roll an attack roll, which would be one d twenty plus your dexterity bonus plus your proficiency bonus. So one d twenty plus two plus two. So it should be a 1d20 plus 4, I think. You I might already have it all mapped out. Yeah. I need to do a roll 20 thing. Roll 16. Nice! So 16 is a hit. It beats his armor class. So then we go on to rolling damage. The arrow sunk its way into his chest. Uh, so I believe the damage for a longbow is a 1d6. Uh, yep. Uh, so you do 1d6 plus your dexterity, but not plus your proficiency. So it's 1d6 plus 2. Yeah, that that is true, Adri. On a nat one and an archer roll, it could cause friendly fire. That's when I, I do stuff like that. Absolutely. So nice, maximum damage, eight damage. So um, why don't you describe to me how you you shoot over Liz's shoulder to kill this guy here? Uh, I'm just going headshot straight for the eye. Nice. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> he just kind of thunks down onto the floor and kind of you know gurgles some and just dies down there. It's pretty gruesome. Um, Raina's, damn, Raina's badass. She just gets up and shoots people in the face. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. Okay, so you can still move if you want to, and you can still take a bonus action if you have anything which uses bonus actions. Um, I think I'll just leave it there. You know, he's already dead. Yeah, yeah, and you're at, you're at a good range, so that makes sense. <laughs> cool, cool. All right, so that's the end of... Liz's turn, and it turns over to Reginald. Your turn, sir. I have a nervous tick that when I'm abruptly awoken from my sleep, my default move, if we're in some sort of danger, is magic missile. Ah! <laughs> so I, I, I quickly look around and determine who exactly is friendly and who exactly needs to be fired. And I cast it in their direction here. Absolutely. And the great thing about magic missiles is they can't miss. Yeah, magic missiles always hit. It's a spell, so this is using his action just as making an attack would do. Also, uh, correction that Rainer's uh, longbow is a D8. That's my mistake. Oh. Not oh, a yeah, D6. Bows, yeah. But it doesn't matter because you I nailed him anyway. <laughs> so, um, so, Reginald casts magic missiles. So, which guy are you firing at? Um, I would probably aim for the guy in the back. This chap here, La Crossbow. Yeah. All right, cool. His it's... purple cape I find quite menacing. Yeah, I, well, <laughs> it is, actually, yes. It's the purple cape of menacing. Plus one to menace. Uh, but yes, um, so you do ten force damage. Magic missile is so good. And uh, how do you want to kill him? Uh, my missiles would eject from my hand, go out, and then come right back in and I'll hit him at the same time, and he would just and die. I like it. Nice. And, and then I would finger gun blow on him. Oh, of course. <laughs> yeah. That's for Vecna, baby. And uh, he gets kind of pushed back. <laughs> Dies in a horrific fashion, of course. Uh, it is Tira's turn. Okay. Uh, unless you want to, in fact, Reginald, sorry, unless you want to move or make any bonus actions. Um, I did see her shooting a bow and arrow, so I would probably back up a little bit. Okay, cool. Good idea. Good idea. I do not like. I do not like getting shot with bows or arrows. <laughs> yeah, that's that's not fun. Um, so Tira, it's your turn. What would you like to do? Um, because I'm off to the side. Am I near anything to kind of like hide? Uh, be stealthy. 
So there's not really like long grasses around here. There is like a like a, a bush here uh, that you're next to, and a kind of uh, yeah, a bush here as well. Uh, but at the same time, these guys do know where you are, so your advantage of kind of like stealth is is mostly gone. They are kind of keeping an eye on you, um, and so do you know what I mean like approaching someone from the front is going to be a very hard stealth roll for them not to see you. You could try and go like around, uh, but that might take you a while to do so. Um, you could definitely okay. roll a stealth check if you want to be unseen. Uh, second question. Um, okay. I don't know how dual wielding works. Uh, I have the two short swords. Uh, right. How would I go about, if I even get to him, how would I go about doing that? Absolutely. Let's let's find the actual ruling on that. Because off the top of my head, I don't have the it to my hand. I have it on the compendium though. And also, if you look, guys are looking for the character sheets, then you can find them. Exclamation point sheets. So you can you can see what cantrips he has. So jewel ruling. Let's put into our compendium and see what comes out. And if anyone has their PHB to hand, I don't. Uh, yeah, I do. Kind nice. of. <laughs> uh, dual wielding? Yeah. I want to have this from the, the PHB rather than my messy way of explaining things. If that makes sense. Do you know what page it's on? <laughs> <laughs> no, I've done my head. <laughs> it's different. I can, I, can go, I can go simple. We can discuss it later if that helps. I can just go with the one. So I believe you make the offhand attack, am I right? So you make the first one. At normal, and then the second one is an offhand attack, but you don't. It doesn't get your proficiency. Get, it doesn't get your proficiency. So, the, so you make two attack rolls. The first one is 1d20 plus whatever, most likely dex plus proficiency. The second one is an offhand with your other weapon, maybe your dagger, and you don't add proficiency bonus to that one. There might be other rules to it, but I haven't played a dual wielder in so long. The last time I've done it is in 3.5, and the rules are very, very different. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I guess I will. Move. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So I won't do much, I guess. You can get into. I don't know how to move them. Okay. You can also you can throw a weapon as the second weapon. It just it works as long as both weapons are light melee weapons. Two or or throw. Daggers. Uh, yeah, yeah. Short swords are light weapons. Yep. I don't know if I want to throw my short swords at him. <laughs> you can throw a dagger at him. Yeah, just you throw as... daggers. Yeah, if you want. You can, can get in. in you can get into range to fight him hand to hand, or you can. You, d you are in range currently. Yeah. I guess I'll just throw a dagger at him because I can't move. I don't know how to move him. <laughs> oh, you can't move your token. Oh. You oh, you need be. to switch from the uh, ruler icon on the yep. left side to the uh, mouse yep. button. The top Feature mouse icon. button. Select the and move, then... and you should yeah. be able to move it around. There you go. Okay. Uh, Apparently, attack bonus is the same with your fan. You just don't get a bonus damage. Okay, cool. Good to know. Yeah, I'll go there, uh, okay. and I'll throw daggers from there. All right, cool. See those uh, attack rolls. So the first one, 1d20. I think apparently they're both the same attack roll and the bonus damage is different. Says okay. the guy in the chat. So uh, throw a dagger. I got an 18. Nice. Uh, so you're going to add your dexterity bonus to that as well. Uh, which is probably like a plus 2 or a plus 3. Uh, so. Um, yeah, plus three, cool. So it's easily a hit, and then you'd also add your uh, proficiency onto that as well. So probably like something like a 23 for that hit, uh, for future reference. So that is a hit with the first one. Uh, then you can roll damage. Now, a dagger damage is what, a d4? I believe so. Yeah. Uh, and then you can add your dexterity bonus to that as well. Yeah, 1d4. So six damage, nice. So you you lob a dagger at him, and you should be able to use your um. <laughs> the guy in the chat. Um, so you should be able to use your uh, second attack to to offhand for the offhand one. Is that correct, or can you not do that? Should be. As long should be able to do it? Yeah. Okay, cool. So you can roll another attack roll. 
for your second dagger if you'd like. I will throw another dagger. All right, let's do it. Can I aim it at the other one, or am I too far? Uh, you could get him. It'd probably be a harder shot, seeing as he's kind of like behind this guy. So you could that's aim at this guy. guy okay. The guy that's in between her and the second guy, he already took damage from me too. That's, that's true. Yeah. First, so I don't know if that changes whether or not he's dead or not. You hit the guy to the right of you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, I'll just hit him again. Okay. Cool. Uh, fourteen. Uh, fourteen is dead on the money. So I roll damage. And on the second dagger, damage is just the d4. Cool. Five. Thank you, guys. Uh, so you actually don't add the the, the oh, plus the three one. on the second one? Yeah, so that's... But uh, it is enough to kill him with eight damage. That's dead on his health. So how do you want to... How do you want to kill this man? Uh... I guess I will... When I threw the first dagger, uh -huh. I guess uh, that one was a better shot. So that kind of, like, hit him in the throat. <laughs> <laughs> and then when I threw the second one, uh, it hit him, uh, I guess, in the chest and just ended it. Yeah, yeah. First one, uh, in the throat, and the second one, uh, funks into the chest, and he falls down onto the floor, just, um, and uh, is not not having a good day, let's say. <laughs> not having a good day. <laughs> um, a fate of T, Jizzle, and Chris. Franco for following, our gentlemen and scholars. So, excellent. Uh, again, guys, sorry for taking us a bit slow. We do want to get everything right and explain things as we're going. And half the rules, you know, I don't even know. So, uh, let's... Um, anything else you'd like to do, Tira? You've moved and you've uh, attacked. If you have any bonus action things, I think you can do them at this point. No, I'm All good. Right. Perfect, perfect. So, that is the bandits, or as they now are, bandit. Uh, and uh, he is going to try and fight back against Pusk, even though he's very wounded. And it's going to be a 7 versus your armor class, Pusk. I think that misses. I think that misses as well. So <laughs> he comes in with his, um, his like short sword to come and overhead stab you. Um, and he, uh, you manage to block or dive out of the way. Uh, very easily. So, that is uh, what is known as round one. Oh, currently the the retweet stuff is hidden by the uh, <laughs> the, uh, the combat map one. But um, so let's go back there. So that's the end of round one. We now go into round two, which means that re we reset our round. We go back up to the top of the turn order, which is Pusk who rolled that seventeen. So Pusk, it's your turn to act again. Has, did Anna go last turn? Did Anna go no. last turn? <laughs> no. We had we had Raina, Reginald, and I missed out Liz. My apologies, oh. Liz. That's how okay. you go now. Okay. Um. So basically, charge at him, and I'm gonna move around here. Nice. Turn. Sure. Sure. <laughs> Just shout, uh, just shout at me when I forget things, because I, I end up doing it. It's that. okay. I wasn't <laughs> sure if you, like... I don't know if you had said... No, uh, no, I get things wrong the all the time. <laughs> uh, whatever, it works out. So I kind of just struck. charge at him with my great axe. It's a great axe. It's a great axe. Pretty nice axe right there. <laughs> and fine axe I'm rolling there. shit today. That is... I forgot a 10. A 10 is not a hit. Uh, she, well, she also rolled a d12. That uh, might have something to do with it. There we go. Uh, <laughs> Actually, you did really uh, well. <laughs> wow, it's perfect. That's uh, funny. And you said plus dex. Uh, so for or... you, it's most likely plus strength because you're using a great axe. So it's 20, pl 20 plus strength plus two for your proficiency bonus. So whatever that adds up to. Like, okay. Oh. Wow, that's, that's okay. better. much better. Nice, that's a hit. So now, now you can roll that damage. And then for my D12, it's gonna be plus the five. And I have an attack bonus. It's, it's your strength, yeah. Yep. Yeah, whatever your strength bonus is. 
Roll. Boom. Boom. 1d12. Wait, 1d12 plus 7. That shouldn't be right. So, you don't add in your proficiency bonus to that? Uh, 5? So, your strength it's... is 5, yeah. Okay, cool. So, 1d12 plus 5. So, we'll take 2 off that. So, 11. It's more than enough to muller him. Uh, but uh, worth noting for in the future, you don't add your uh, proficiency bonus to the damage roll. Um, okay. But yeah, how do you want to end this man's life? Um, I just I ask? slit like go like this and right for the throat, and hopefully I chop his head off. Yeah, you you chop his head off. Okay. It's uh. <laughs> It's a pretty, it feels good, man. It's a pretty clean cut, uh, as you just kind of like pop it off, uh, and uh, he falls down dead in your camp. Lovely. Congratulations, everybody. You just survived your first Dungeons & Dragons encounter for some of you. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, I would immediately be like, who are these men? What did they want? <laughs> they wanted food. Yeah, they just wanted some food that we might or might not have had. So we murdered them? Yes. Better than us. <laughs> oh, they threatened us. That's way different. Oh. <laughs> Brigands. I roll over and go back. unicorns. <laughs> I need to get a full night's rest. Take the bodies, I suppose. Yeah, Do that D&D &D thing. Yep. Yeah, of course, one has to loot the bodies after yeah. after I one has. <laughs> it's required to play Dungeons and Dragons. And of course, yes. So I'm, um, assume, I'm just assumed that starving brigands don't have magical items on them, and that's the only one, reason. One, yes, back. that would be a uh, fair assumption. However, they do have a fair bit of gold on them. They got five gold pieces between them, uh, and um, they don't have any food on them whatsoever. And other than that, they've got their weapons that they had on them. So there's a crossbow lying around with ten bolts. Uh, there's also uh, two short swords and a axe, a hand axe. Other than that, they're next to naked. I just hope my dagger's back. Just like clean them off and use them. Sure. I'll, I'll grab the other hand axe. Sure, okay. I can use the crossbow. Yeah, I'm up for that. Yeah, yeah, crossbow's pretty good. Okay. The five year old that they had between us? Probably. Yeah, they each had five. No, no, no. So between them, they had five. So there is like one gold piece oh. for each of you. Oh. If you wish to split it that way, of course, if someone wants to take all the whole five <laughs> and be that guy, then you can. I'm asleep, so. <laughs> yeah, he's already passed back out. <laughs> I would offer to split it if I found the gold. And I would walk around to everyone and hand them a gold each. And. Yeah. Original to sleep, but I walk and like place the gold on his chest. No. Walter would pick it up and take it and <laughs> play with it. <laughs> <laughs> and that will be very confusing for me in the morning. Where did you get gold? <laughs> Have you been robbing people again? <laughs> <laughs> so, um, hey, what's up, DJ? Um, so. You, um, the rest of the night passes by fairly uneventfully. You guys manage to, uh, you know, survive the, uh, the night of any more, uh, people trying to steal your food or kill you. Uh, you know, it happens sometimes when you're adventurous. Uh, but you wake up and, uh, let's see what happens the next morning. So, um, let's go with, we've done Tira, we've done Reginald, we've done, do we do Pusk? Do we do Pusk? I don't know, let's do Pusk. Let's do a Pusk encounter or Whoa. thing. So Pusk, it's... Uh, you know, second or third day along your travels. You've had a pretty eventful time thus far. What happens while you're traveling? I think I'm going to go with the classic and say on our journey, we are already on our way and the road is blocked off by like two overturned wagons and there's a group of highwaymen who are taking a toll for the road. Mm. Excellent. Excellent. So, um... You, uh, yeah, you see in the middle of the road, there's kind of upturned wagons, very similar to your own wagon that you're currently uh, traveling with, along with uh, the two horses, Bill and Tracy. And you, um, <laughs> you see there's, there's several gentlemen who appear to be armed, who are kind of sitting on the top of these wagons. One of them calls out, all right, it's a one gold piece toll if you want to pass by. 
These lands are owned by Rusty Ned. <laughs> Sounds very official, I said sarcastically. <laughs> One gold piece is all we ask for, for safe travels through. And we'll give you some information as well. So you promise us safety through these uh, parts? That's right, right through these wagons here, love. <laughs> but not the rest of the way. What do you think I am, a fucking babysitter? <laughs> I'll say one gold total, yeah? One gold <laughs> each, my friend, that's all we ask. Roll up, roll up. I think that you should pay us to keep you safe. I don't think I need that, sweetheart, but thank you very much for the kind offer. <laughs> you might, if this doesn't go your way. So to avoid any kind of casualties, you should just go ahead and pay us to not bother you. I'll hold up my hand to like <laughs> give her the motion to be quiet for a moment. <laughs> I'll say, I don't think there's any need for that. And I just take out my coin purse and I tossed him one gold piece for my safe passage. Nice. He takes so it. Thank you, fella. <laughs> Feel free to pass on by. No one needs to get hurt. This could be an amiable exchange. Uh, right. Did you say no, one piece of information as well? So is that one piece of information per person? Nah, I don't have that much piece of information. <laughs> 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 Just one for the group of you, seeing as you all are like good friends. How many people are there at this toll thing? Oh, three or four. <laughs> they look pretty kind of like... Take pretty well. <laughs> they look pretty well kind of like... Uh, you know, protected, I suppose. They're kind of in some pretty heavy cover. This doesn't seem very official to me. I am I think it's pretty sketchy. I think we could... What does the road beside the wagons look like? Could we just take our wagon and go around theirs? <laughs> I mean, um, you probably have to take a take a journey into a swamp, we'll say. So they position themselves in such a place that you kind of have to go through it if you want to go... want to pass mm. by. A strategic location. Well, I mean, Pus was already paid. I pay yeah. for me. Pus, you know, Pusk's already gone through. Pusk can pay for the rest of us. <laughs> I'm I think I'm still with the group. Okay, I'll you want to be with the group, yeah. And say, it's just one gold piece. Yeah, it's, let's do it. It's just one gold piece. It's one gold piece that I could use for other things. I you like her. That is the point. <laughs> Are any of you actually going to pay yeah. for the toll? Yeah, I will because I just don't want any more trouble. I'm just like, yeah, let's just go do this curse thing and then come back for more. Get more money when we get back. I sigh and I give up and just give them my gold as well. Fine. Right. Right. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. I have my bird deliver the gold and come back. I want to whisper to Liz, we'll get them when we'll come back. Yeah, let's do it. <laughs> well, you seem like a uh, entrepreneurial group of uh, fellows, so I'll give you this little uh, tidbit. There's a merchant caravan not a few hours just passed up here. Bunch of fat, rich merchants. They might be uh, amiable to, uh, you know, do one over. They're on their way up to... Uh, Are you suggesting that we rob these merchants? No, that's not what I'm suggesting at all. I'm suggesting you do one over on them. Completely different. <laughs> How so? One of them's a legal term. <laughs> legal term, that doing one over. Yep. <laughs> official business. <clears throat> Just like this one. This is Just like official our business. official business here. Look, we got a name and everything. And he like points mm -hmm. to the, the kind of like... <laughs> I don't know, it's like... Uh, uh, toll booth of the boys, you know? <laughs> it's just painted on the side of one of the wagons. Just painted on the side of a wagon of like a, you know, <laughs> big brush. <laughs> Pass oh, them through. Why do I not have fireball yet? <laughs> <laughs> Level me up. <laughs> did, uh, did we get experience in the last fight? Yeah, so um, the way I tend to track experience is not by... Uh, you know, individual points and stuff like that. So at the end of sessions, I'll let you guys know if you've leveled up or uh, okay. if you're close to leveling up and stuff like that. I Otherwise, have a question. You said that after 
the night when the four starving dudes woke us up, this is the next day or several days later? Yeah, a couple of days later. So we'll say about halfway through your journey. Okay, but, so we got a full night's rest. Yeah, I'm you got a full night's rest. We'll strictly see you, but... asking in regards to spell slot Absolutely. return. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, figured of Mechanica and Lagerus for following as well. Sorry, go ahead. Me. All right, so um, yeah, so you, you head on through, and uh, I think the who haven't we done yet? Uh, so Sophie and Raina, have we done what well, little little scene for you yet? I don't think we have. Not yet. My, my memory is so fucking bad. So um, <laughs> so so Raina, you're traveling along. You're going through this territory here, which is clearly you know you have some presence by bandits uh, and someone called Rusty Ned. And there's apparently a caravan with merchants, uh, you know, up ahead. So, um, what is something that might happen to you guys on your travels here? Um, could we happen to cross paths with these merchants? Perhaps? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So, um, you know, it's a couple of hours later, just as just as foretold by the uh, the the gentleman, the honest gentleman before, and. Uh, you see that there's several wagons here filled with uh, merchants. However, um, unlike how uh, the guy said before, they do look like they're fairly well protected. There's maybe seven, seven or eight guards who are actually guarding these uh, these two caravans. Hmm. So you kind of come up uh, upon them, kind of like from behind. One of them kind of spots you and says, "Hola, friend or foe? Wizard." <laughs> Depends on who's asking. He uh he like shrugs his shoulders. Welcome, friend. Okay. <laughs> People love wizards. <laughs> yeah, it's what can I say? I mean, just go on those faces. It's a, it's a name that just opens doors and gives yeah. you opportunities. I'm a wizard. <laughs> <laughs> I should have yelled that at the guys at the toll booth. Ugh. Damn. Oh, Next time. <laughs> So, um, yeah, he, uh, he says, uh, what can we do you for today? To where do you travel, friends? Uh, my, my name is Kerif, by the way. He's a oh. pretty, like, handsome-looking guy in his 20s, uh, mid-20s, bit of a <coughs> bit of stubble going on, wears a guard uniform. Guy in Seacrest. Uh-huh. Maybe he'll pat you down. <laughs> <laughs> we are on our way to, uh, Sleek Wharf. Are we heading? The, are we heading in the correct direction? Oh, well, you're going the right way, but uh, we'd be brave to head there. But word is, uh, something awful's happened there. Oh no, really? What happened? <laughs> well, we just heard something from uh, from from travelers uh, coming by, but uh, they said that they're fleeing some kind of disaster. People die and stuff like that. Well, it's too late, guys. Let's go home. <laughs> <laughs> Like, what, how are they dying? Well, you have you a business in Sleek Wolf? Uh, Will we? Maybe. You could say that. On those lines. I understand that information <laughs> is worth a gold upon this road. <laughs> he likes he likes shrugs. <laughs> oh yeah, you must have run into those vagabonds before. That's how we heard about you. Ah. <laughs> uh. Yeah, figured as much. Well, we're uh, we're heading up to Neverwinter with this cargo. Uh, safe travels mm. to you. Uh, you can travel with us for a while if you want. It's safer in numbers. If you could explain to me also what doing one over on one is. <laughs> this is going to take a while. <laughs> <laughs> a long journey. <laughs> Strap in, son. It's going to be a long one. <laughs> so, so, um... He proceeds to explain to you. Kerif explains uh, explains to you what exactly doing one over on you actually means. And that night, you guys camp and you meet some of the other guys who uh, guys and gals who ran the uh, the kind of the guarding of these kind of merchants who appear to have some you know some stock, but it seems to be protected at all times. Um, and uh, and Kerif kind of sits you down and says, uh, "So are you uh, adventurers then? The group of you look like an odd." An odd uh, bunch, if you don't mind me saying. Oh, you look pretty odd to yourself. <laughs> Thank you, I, I think. <laughs> <laughs> oh, are you flirting with him? <laughs> yeah, yeah. 
Is that what flirting looks like? You look odd. <laughs> you look odd. <laughs> you look weird. No, you look weird. <laughs> That's how you do it, gents. Um, he, uh, he says, uh, well, uh, yeah, may have we do. Uh, we've been traveling these roads for, well, I've been traveling for years now. It's been a, it's been a hard time. Lost many good men along the way. There's lots of uh, banditry and worse in the area. But uh, Sleep Wharf, from what I know, is uh, meant to be a pretty prosperous little uh, trading town. But if the word is true, then you might find better luck elsewhere. I mean, do you mind me asking why you're going there? Is it for a job or your family there, maybe? It's one gold per question. <laughs> I just, I just, I, yes, we're going there for a job. <laughs> <laughs> he looks he looks thankfully at Pusk. <laughs> <laughs> I see, I see. Well, uh, you're welcome to stay with us as long as you want. We're, like I say, we're heading up to Neverwinter. Plenty of opportunity for work there. But we're if you're... a specific kind of job. We're not really looking at the moment. Oh. But oh, you well... said earlier that everyone's dying. Would you happen to know how they're dying? No, I don't, no. All we saw was a couple of people rushing past us, screaming that something had gone wrong. We barely got time to, uh, time to talk to them. They seemed kind of crazy, almost. Well, that could mean anything. <laughs> I suppose so. Maybe it's nothing. Then again, I've learned to trust a rumor on the road. Hmm. No information you've paid for, much more <laughs> trustworthy. <laughs> you wouldn't happen to know anything about this uh, disaster, would you? You seem pretty interested in it. No, we're on our way there, not from. I see, I see. Well, I'm going to turn in for the night. Never try to out logic a wizard. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> a wizard is never illogical. <laughs> he, uh, he's like shrugging his shoulders and goes back to his guard post. So you guys have got a kind of chance to chat to one another in private for a little bit. Around the uh, the campfire, if you so choose to do so, to the, each other, <laughs> we huddle up like a football team. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> come on, guys, strategy, strategy. <laughs> so we're gonna kill them all, right? Right, guys. <laughs> no, 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 no one was thinking that. Just you. <laughs> was that just just me oh, thinking that we should kill them? <laughs> it sounds like the curse has only found its way to sleep there, though. Mm. If it's anything <laughs> like the boat, the town has already eaten everyone there. <laughs> would it have possibly eaten the person who opened it i don't know we'll have to go and see <laughs> hopefully they would wrote a diary entry and put it in their pocket before they they died <laughs> yeah, that's so tiny cool. all we need to do is destroy this chest but it sounds like we have to hurry yeah but isn't the curse gonna like affect us so are we gonna die yeah. i'm a wizard i'm not worried about curses oh, okay fine <laughs> I think it's it's ship us that are. Now I'm gonna go talk back to talking to my book. <laughs> Speaking of your book, has it said anything to you recently? Oh, it doesn't talk. It it writes messages to me. But no, Nick left you. Nick <laughs> writes messages to you. Oh my goodness! And Bob Bar just subscribed. Thank you so much, my friend, the gentleman. A scholar, welcome into the gentleman's club, sir. Salute us. Raise a drink in chat for Bombard. Thank you, dude. Which is actually, dare I say it? Dare I say it? Our third viewer decision of the day. Oof. Lost. Um, so these guys are almost there. They're almost at their destination. About halfway there, I think. Actually, we're gonna get to it fairly soon. But what happens next? We've got 20 minutes left in this show. Um, Andy Flatline in the chat, throw out some ideas as to what could happen next to the party. They're currently camped, camped at night um, with uh, with uh, a guard caravan with um, lots of uh, goods. But I don't know what it is yet, but we'll see. So what happens next? Sorry, guys, you carry on your, uh, your little conversation. I hear children. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, that was my Chinese. <laughs> Uh, Has anyone actually figured out what these merchants are selling? Should we go talk to somebody? I was gonna wait till morning, let them rest. Yeah, yeah they're probably gonna sneak around. We could. I like that idea. Yeah. Let's. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sneaky. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> Let's 
<laughs> Reginald with a look of exasperation on my face. <laughs> like, <laughs> this again. <laughs> Come on, pass, have some fun once in your life. Yeah, it's fun. Fun? Uh, okay. <laughs> yeah, I take it like oh, my wine skin and just start from it. Okay. If we get pass drunk enough, do you think he'll go steal things with us? <laughs> That's how it works, right? Yeah. <laughs> hold on, hold on. Liz has rum, right? <laughs> yes. You have rum. Let's do this. <laughs> so I just hand him the whole thing of rum. Oh, I drink it. <laughs> <laughs> chug, okay, chug, back. chug. <laughs> how, do you, how do you like your rum, Pusk? Uh, straight up. Nice. <laughs> nice. Roll me, a, roll me a constitution. Check, because I, I feel like Puss doesn't drink too much, is that right, or am I wrong in thinking that? He he oh. drinks more than you would expect a monk to... Uh, oh no, you're, yes, no, of course, no, he, uh, he he turned up drunk, that's why, that makes sense. Yeah. But I will roll you that constitution check. Because... Nice, thank you, yeah. Nine. Man, that, that, that Imga link for most characters is so fucking good, oh my god. I love it. Um, a nine, so you're, you're starting to feel a little drunk. You know, uh, you know, even your constitution. This is some pretty good rum that they've gotten a hold of. They probably, probably even stole that. Uh, <laughs> dwarven rum, probably. Probably dwarven rum. Yeah. So, Pusk, how about you go on an adventure with us? Yeah. So look around yeah. the camp to see what, what's Make it cool. going on. Because, um, uh, I heck with it. Why not? <laughs> <laughs> <No>. <laughs> So you see Kerif and some other guards kind of guarding the like the uh, the van um, mm -hmm. of uh, of goods, and the merchants are probably asleep with him. So he, I think, Pesk will just like walk straight up to him and just like poke him in the chest and be like, "So we were just wondering what it is that you guys are carrying." <laughs> Yeah, like he, you know, he gives you that look, like like he's stone cold sober, and he knows that you are like completely smashed out of your mind. Uh, and he's like, uh, just some stuff that we need to take to Neverwinter. Listen, friend, you might want to take a take it easy on the drink there. Would you like some? I think we have some more. No, I'm not really allowed to drink on a job, but thank you. While they're talking, can I kind of see what's on the caravan, like what loot they have or uh, what they're selling, what they're carrying, I guess. Uh, so you want to kind of sneak past them? Yeah. Yeah, run I kind of want to... Roll me a stealth check. Um, yes, good idea that, yes. Give Pusk the net one I donated for his audition. <laughs> so, Pusk, you're trying, you know, you're trying to talk to him, you're trying to be his mate kind of thing, but he's kind of taking it the wrong way. Uh, he's kind of getting annoyed with you. And so he's like, right, you, Pusk, you need to sit down, mate, and get out of here, this is official business. Right, you can't yeah. be here. I just, you know, I don't know why you're getting so aggressive all of a sudden, you know? I'm just trying to be friendly here. And yeah, well, listen, mate, I can't really have friends right now. We, we can we can chat later, yeah, but this is... Okay, okay, okay. Yeah. I put out my hands, <laughs> walking away. Yeah. yeah. I go over, and before he walks away, I go over it, and I just kind of apologize to the guard. I'm like, I'm assuming he's kind of like, flailing or something, and I kind of like grab him and be like, sorry sir, my friend, it's his first uh, thing of rum, so no, you know. No worries, no worries. Definitely just... not my first thing of rum, I will let you know that. No, 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 no. <laughs> And then I kind of try to get on with the conversation, or sure. kind of keep it going while um, she's kind of trying to steal stuff. Okay, so... I... Wow. 29? 29! <laughs> Oh my god. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> Ooh, mama. So you um Yeah, you you kind of like head into their wagons uh, and you hear them kind of snoring, uh merchants inside, uh and you kinda of open up one of the crates and you see weapons inside. These guys look like they're they're arms dealers. They got uh, you know, swords and crossbows and military grade stuff, most likely to go to the army at Neverwinter. And it's just weapons, there's nothing else back there? Nope, nope, but these would probably be worth a lot of money to, uh, the right people. I don't think I can carry a whole lot. <laughs> it's true, yeah, they've got, like, big, big crates of them stashed uh, in here. Yeah, wagons, you know? 
wagons can carry a lot. Boat wagons. <laughs> I mean, uh, yeah, they're carrying them all in those two wagons here. Uh, could I kind of like take a crate out? Like, if you wanted to, you'd probably have to roll me another stealth check. They're pretty big and quite loud to move around, most likely. I don't, I don't know how I could do this because I could take some out, kind of set them down, and. <laughs> I don't know how I would get their attention to, like, come help me, like, for somebody else to sneak around. Yeah, I mean, he's probably, like, Liz is probably doing the best. He's like, where, where did that other one go? Cool, cool. So, I'm going to go ahead and just sneak. All right, um, back is in. there anything, like, uh, light enough for me to carry a couple of things out? Uh, yeah, Hi. maybe, like, a couple of daggers, maybe a short sword. Yeah, I'm going to take a couple of things. All right, so you take, you take a couple of daggers. Um, and you kind of sneak back and- Oh! Oh. Got worried about the goods then. Anyway, what were we talking about, Liz? Oh, you know, stuff and things. You know, maybe we should grab a lit, uh, a couple of drinks later. Well... <laughs> <laughs> I'm like bad at flirting. Roll for flirting. He's like... <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm totally gonna do that. He's like... <laughs> he like looks at him like... <sighs> Damn it! <laughs> uh, it's a, a ten. Uh, he's like, uh, I mean, yeah, yeah, sure, sure, maybe we could get a few drinks. Is he into it? You don't know, like, he's get, he's like, you don't, you don't know. <laughs> On a 10, it's like, you, you, you don't feel like you nailed it, but... Did you, you add your charisma like, modifier to that 10? Oh shit, you're right. Yeah, you should add your charisma to that, yeah. Uh, what is, where's my charisma? Oh, plus three, 13. Alright, 13, yeah, so, like, you're getting, like, a, yeah, okay, kind of vibe. Not like, he's not like, yeah, let's go right now. But it's like, sure. <laughs> sure thing, he's chill. All right, well, and then do I see um, Tira walk out? We'll say that you do, yeah. Uh, all, right, I'm like, all right, well, you know, have a great night. Don't get yourself in trouble. Don't yeah. have people stealing stuff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, yeah, I'll, I'll catch you later for a drink or something. I'm just gonna walk away. Sure. With uh, drunk dude, like nailed it. <laughs> Was that the only caravan, or were there other things? Uh, we'll say that you kind of like explored both of them. So there were kind of two of them, but it looks like there were weapons in both of them. Um, both of them guarded Didn't by. Have food on them? Did it have anything? <laughs> yeah. So yeah, I guess you can tell the guys that um, what you. Uh, what you found in there, um, and you did you did manage to get away with two daggers as well. Two daggers. Yeah. Um. Oh boy. And we have our viewer decision in as well. So as you guys return back, and you're like, you know, oh, you know, found some weapons here, or whatever. Uh, can you each roll me a wisdom saving throw, please? Uh, oh boy. Oh, yeah, yes. <laughs> I wish I could draw three, but Mo and Flip are my go tos. A 22 from Mike, a 16 from Reginald, a 12 from Liz. Uh, is that a natural one from Michael? Who knows? Who knows? <laughs> oh, <okay>. <laughs> <laughs> sure, we'll say it is. Uh, oh, <laughs> Tira rolled a 16, Raina rolled a 9. So anybody who failed now has to use the next, the next bits of dialogue have to be sung <laughs> until the end of the show. Oh for the next 10 minutes. For the next 10 minutes. We're singing those lines. And anyone who wants to sing lines as well. <laughs> <laughs> what, what was the check? A 10 and above? Or? Yeah, we'll say uh, any... Uh, no, we'll set like 14. <laughs> 14 and above, you said? Yeah. No. <laughs> if you got a 14 or higher, you passed. You passed. Oh, yeah. okay. <laughs> so we've right, got so Anna and Raina... <laughs> And what did, Mike uh, rolled in that one because of his thingy uh, donation last last week. <laughs> so you three are singing. Okay. So morning. So anything we say in character, we have to sing it. Yes. Okay. No, so they can't sing. So this is gonna be really interesting. <laughs> I believe in you. Please mute your mics now. <laughs> Everyone just mute. <laughs> Remove the glass. <laughs> so uh, you wake up uh, in the morning, and um, you. Uh, you're gonna see, um, what's his name? Uh, Kerif, 
uh, he's kind of like doing his rounds in the morning, stops by you guys, he's like, uh, hey guys, good, good morning, good to see you all, hey Liz. Good morning! <laughs> <laughs> She seems chipper this morning. Uh, sounds like you. Self. Sounds like you had a good night. I'm gonna go out to drink with some cute guy later. Uh, you you are. Yep. Oh okay. I, I see. I thought we had a. N <laughs> never mind. Never mind. We. You, you, uh, you probably don't remember anyway. <laughs> I whispered thing because I didn't remember it was kind of dark, and I was like, "Was he a guy that I asked out on a drink later?" I honestly don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> so he's like, he's he's like, should I? I'll just should I just I'll just go. Uh, uh, yeah, okay. Uh, <clears throat> he does the awkward kind of like. Bye, waves. Says goodbye too many times. Uh, and then I whisper, I think it was him. <laughs> and, then, and then I take him out for that drink. Oh, okay. Where, where, where'd you go? <laughs> I mean, you're, you're on the road, I suppose. There's a tavern. Oh, well, obviously. Of course, you come across a tavern. <laughs> this can be this can be Liz's uh, encounter. First date, you know, first dates are always awkward. Sure. For me. So you find a like a tavern along the road, and uh, you know they're stopping for uh, you know like for a rest and stuff like that. Uh huh. And uh, and so Kerif is like, so do you want to you know, I don't know if you do you, you want to get this drink. What was that? What was that? Is that... <laughs> <laughs> You're right. I said you want to get this drink. Yes, let's do it. <laughs> the curse <laughs> seems to have already taken effect. <laughs> he can like, he whispers to he whispers to Raina. He's like, is is why is she singing all the time? Is that normal? I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna go with that. <laughs> he kind of like it. he like shakes his head to try and like. Uh, oh my god. <laughs> okay. Uh, he um. He, he like shrugs and um <laughs> heads into the uh, heads into the uh, little tavern. Gets your drink. So uh, why are you um? Can you? I don't know if you can tell me about the 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 quest you're on and whatnot. <laughs> Sounded kind of highly secret. That's because it is, and we can't tell anybody. <laughs> okay, I, I understand. I understand. He like he like sits awkwardly in silence for a bit and sips at his drink. Can I can so. I walk like behind Byer, behind her, kind of whisper? Like, <laughs> I can talk about you, like talk about yourselves, <laughs> not the quest. <laughs> so, uh, you're, you're right. <laughs> Oh, what kind of stuff are you into? <laughs> he's, he's like, uh, well, uh, you know, I like to, uh, you know, slay things, uh, you know, guard caravans. I like guarding caravans. That's pretty good. Um, I, uh, I, I craft little, uh, wooden figures sometimes, you know, mm. like, a. Like, I'm, 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 I made you this, and uh, like he uh, he goes into his pocket and there's like a little like seashell kind of carved out of wood. It's actually like kind of cool. It's like it's kind of good. It's like it's a little <laughs> bit shit really, but it's kind of good. Uh, sure and that. he's like, uh, I'm, I'm, that that that's that's just something. I mean, it's not very good. It's just you know, whatever. I love this. Wow. Oh, yeah. You okay. are so talented. You should that. do this. For a living, you should sell them. Uh, thanks. Are you a bard? <laughs> I am not. <laughs> you should be. You're very full of song. Oh, thank you. You are so kind. Please tell me more about yourself. <laughs> well, uh, he proceeds to tell you, you know, all of the fascinating facts about Kerif and his family and his 
uh, you know, uh, it's his parents, where they come from. He actually comes from Neverwinter, and he's been doing this job pretty much all of his life. Hmm. I can't go over here. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how to do that. <laughs> Be a gold digger. <laughs> Does so, uh, Raina say anything at this point? I don't think Raina. She's kind of third wheeling, is it? Yeah, she? yeah. <laughs> Wait, are we all are we all like third wheeling here? Because <laughs> well. honestly, no. I thought you were walking behind her. <laughs> I thought uh, it would kind of just be me and Liz, but <laughs> we're all here, like, yep, I'm on a date. <laughs> oh god. <laughs> oh, you know, she's just one of my best friends, and she kind of wanted to come for a dream. No, no worries, no worries. It's more, more the merrier. Uh, so listen, uh, you know, tomorrow you're going to be going off to this uh, war, sleep war thing, and I'm going to be going to Neverwinter, so we'll be kind of going separate ways. Uh, so if you ever want to, I don't know, stop by in Neverwinter, then, uh, you know, you, you, here's my address. I kind of take it, and I'm just like, I don't have anything to give him, so. <laughs> uh, I'll buy him a drink. Yeah. I will. Yeah, I'll just pat him on the shoulder. Think about it. <laughs> yeah, I guess, I guess so. I, I, I guess I'll <laughs> see you. See you next time then. Uh -huh. but, but, bye. Cheers, him. Cheers. Yep. See ya. <laughs> Does this win most awkward date ever? <laughs> yeah. I got my heels with singing for no reason. Yeah, uh, you're like. There's a wizard it. in the corner taking notes on everything you do. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, this is great stuff. <laughs> He like he goes in oh for like God. the like he's not sure how to leave it, so he goes in for like the the handshake after like attempting the hug, you know, like kind of like. Yeah, I do the same. I'm like, uh. Because uh, I feel like that's probably how most of my dates are. Super awkward. Yeah. <laughs> like, and I, I feel just... like uh, Husk is probably over in the corner with Reginald and he's observing this whole thing from a distance and he'll just turn to Reginald and he'll say, wake me up when this journey ends. <laughs> <laughs> Can you not stop singing as well yeah. everyone is affected by this curse but <laughs> <laughs> yeah you, you look outside and a lot of the guards are like we must go to never winter now <laughs> suddenly I'm this like... is a musical right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so they're just embarrassing him basically the guards didn't even touch the chest when we took it off the ship. I'm so confused. I like, I like your boots. They're red, the color of angry men. <laughs> then they, they go off, uh, shouting and and singing off into the into the distance. Very strange, very strange phenomena. Um, Fade a crescent mood for following. So as the musical band uh, of the guardsmen head out of the uh, the area, that is where we're going to wrap up today's episode of um, the Begins Play D and D episode one. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Next episode we're going to have to see uh, what's going on at Sleek Wharf. More about this curse. Will Carif ever see Liz again? Who knows? What about the horses, Bill and Tracy? Will they ever see? I don't know. Will they die? Will they live? We'll have to find out next week. So thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, we, as we are finishing this show here, we do have another show right about to begin, which is Numenera Age of the Awoken, which is going to be episode one of that as well. So be sure to stick around for a wonderful new campaign with myself, Mitch, Tool School, Trainzy TV, uh, Josh, and Mike will also be joining us next week. So thank you guys for playing. You were awesome for several your times. First time playing Dungeons and Dragons. That was absolutely incredible. That was um, really, really good. I thought all of you guys you know, came out of your shell and, uh, and did a great job. Uh, what did you guys <laughs> think in the chat about these guys? Give them some love. Tell them how great they were. Come on. Uh, Fade of Wookiee Vibes, Quantum for following, and Jeebus as well. So let's go around and uh, how did you guys enjoy your session, your experience, and where can we find you online if we're looking to stalk you home at night? So let's start with Anna. So Anna, what did what do you think of the uh, the show today? I think it was awesome. You know, just finding love in these super strange places. You know, very inspirational for my real life. <laughs> finding 
<laughs> just sing at them. I'm glad, you know? I'm glad we could help you out. <laughs> I mean, Liz is doing something with her life, you know. What wow. am I doing? It's true. It's true. Okay. But hey, no, you're but it was awesome. Yeah, good. <laughs> good. So, um, they answer all the questions. Where can we find you online? Do you have a oh, Twitter yeah. or a Twitch, stuff like that? I do. Um, Twitter and Instagram is just Anna B Photo, A N A B and then photo. And I think Twitch is just Cyborg Pizza, but with like a P. So it's a P S Y Borg Pizza. <laughs> why don't, why don't you say so high in chat or something? Uh, so we can so we can see that. Perfect, perfect. Okay. Um, Sophie, how did you enjoy yourself today? I really enjoyed it, so I've now lost my D&D virginity. Yes, oh my god. Good. <laughs> and you all watched. Uh, <laughs> what a magical moment. Um, yeah, no, it's like my first time live on, well, will stream. And uh, yeah, so I'll definitely be like more out there next time. I'll get there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, you did really good. <laughs> Yeah, I've no, you didn't... Save my life. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> there we go. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it was really fun. Thank you guys. I'm really enjoying this. Looking forward to next week already. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Um, uh, where can we find you online if we're looking at. Um, so, my Twitch and my Twitter are the same because consistent branding. Oh, um, yes. yeah, just... <laughs> That's me in chat right now. So, if you may, two E's, a couple of underscores, and two I's on May, apparently. There you go. Cool. <laughs> Uh, Michael. Yes. How did you enjoy your your time here, sir? I had a great time, obviously. Good. You're fun. I'm enjoying playing with all you. So thank you. I look forward to playing again next week. Absolutely, absolutely. Where can we find you online, sir? You can find me online on Twitter. It's at Michael Yater. That's M I C H A E L Y A T E R. You can also find me playing other various role-playing games at Friendly Fire TV on Twitch. We will be live tomorrow at 6.30 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, which I believe should be 6.30, 7, 8, like 9.30 Eastern, I think. Maths. I'm doing I'm <laughs> right. <laughs> Sounds like if, uh, if you want to tune in for that, that's, again, 6.30 p.m. Pacific Standard Time Absolutely. on Twitch tv slash friendly pirates tv we will be continuing our blades in the dark campaign awesome and it's a great time. awesome stuff us. absolutely uh barry same questions yes i had a great time uh, i got to magic missile some people to death which is always a plus always a good time uh, i got an evil book that likes to talk to me always a plus <laughs> uh, but you know evil's a relative term so um <clears throat> uh, i can be found on the internet in all forms under the handle of Barry Von Awesome. Uh, it's my Twitter, it's my YouTube channel that I haven't posted anything on in a while, but go ahead and go watch all the videos. I think there's like 18 or 19. Uh, and um, yeah, Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat, uh, Twitch chat, all the things. Absolutely, uh, absolutely. All right, and last but not least, Haley. I had a great time. This is my first time uh, being on a stream playing D&D, uh, but not my first time playing. Mm -hmm. So I didn't have much experience with it before. Um, I had a great time. I am on Twitter, Twitch, and uh, Instagram. The great Haley. I'm awesome. like Sophie. I straight all the same things and everything. <laughs> cool, cool. Absolutely. So go follow these guys. Go show them some love. And thank you guys for all the, the lovely supported messages from these guys in their first time here on the show. So we are... My case train's confirmed. <laughs> so we're going to go on a, uh, about like a seven, six minute countdown for our next show, Nubanera. And we'll see these guys again next week. If you enjoyed this show, hit that follow button and join us. You'll be up on YouTube very soon as well. So let's go subscribe to the YouTube. Go follow these guys. Stick around for this next show here, Nubanera episode one. It's about to begin. See you guys next week. See you later, guys. Say bye. Bye. bye.